Hello. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Hi. Happy Friday. Sorry, I'm not with it, and I probably should not have just opened a program right when I was going to transition the camera over. Anyway. Anyway. How are you who are here? Ho ha say what what way. Okay, I'm doing something real quick. Real quick. Oh my god, butters, I can smell your breath. Chancho, no! Gabe! Chancho? Get him to stop. It's not the time for that. Buddy? Hey, buddy. Do you want me to remind you every time you do that? No. You never used to. No, but it fits him. How? I don't know. Hi, it's, Miltsu. It's, Hi, Ikario. It's also like... Hi, I-A-S-T does things? Like, I don't want to call, you know, like... Did I do that right? Like, with the, with the girls, I call them honey. I guess you kind of do. Um, but with a boy, what do I say to a boy? Dude? My guy? Answer, my answer. Hey, my dude. Yeah. My dude. You can totally call, you, you know, the little dog my dude. Yeah, but my buddy. <laughs> I'm not your buddy guy. Well, you are my... You are my guy, buddy. My buddy guy. <laughs> okay. So I'm doing the thing. <laughs> Miltsu says, hi, Ash. Hi, Gabe. Hello. No, I'm not sick. I'm just a little sniffly. I don't know why I get sniffly when I start. Maybe it's because I'm talking to people more. I don't know. Um, I'm going to replace this. Watch the little pencil guy at the bottom of the screen. I'm going to swap him with the color one. I'm going to swap him. Iest? Iest. Okay, I'll try to remember that. Thank you for clarifying. How are you guys f this Friday? I forgot what day it was again, real quick. There it is. Hey! I wanna know about last Friday. What? So, how are you this Friday? I wanna know about last Friday. Well, watch my last stream if you want my old stuff or something. <laughs> I forgot what he says. You want my old shit? Buy my old album. Buy my old album. Alright. Um. Well, okay. I was gonna say, I'm not prepared, but guess what? I kind of am. So, joke's on you. <laughs> Just kidding. Um, how you doing, Meltzu? Do the magic. Make it colorful. Do the thing. Don't screw it up. Or you know what? Screw it up and make it look like you didn't screw it up. That's art. Do you have a theme Yeah, I do. Today's theme is how to part with your art. Um, which, honestly, I've just started to kind of name the streams. I'm gonna talk about it for sure, but I figured naming it is honestly gonna give people more of an idea of like, hey, I'll go to this, because she's just not gonna, you know, draw and be quiet. She's gonna talk about stuff. And, I mean, let's be honest, we always talk about stuff, right? Like, we're always talking about stuff, but... People want to know what are we going to talk about. So, figured I'd do that. How are you and Gabe doing? We're good. Um, it's a really awesome day outside, weather wise. Like, there are these big, fluffy, kind of dark gray clouds, but it's also kind of sunny, but it's not sunny to be hot. And it's like a really good temperature and it's super windy. So, it's like, for me, it's almost the best weather for a Friday the 13th. It's a good day to die. It's a damn good day to die. Um, but also, it is Friday the 13th, and usually my Friday the 13ths are lucky. This one's been weird. I wouldn't say it's been lucky or unlucky. Um, what? Why are you laughing? Get out of here. <laughs> Anyway, 
How is your Friday the 13th? Are you superstitious? Do you have a lucky Friday? My face is like pasty bad white. And my hair is being so... Like it's getting really long, so I'm... I don't know. I want to be able to put it up on streams, but at the same time... Ears? So I can't yeah. really... Don't you start! Get him away from the window! Chancho, come here! Mental health and creativity? Maybe you just break out of your... Um, I know it's helped me in the past is to just kind of break out of whatever your norm is. Just pick him up! Stop talking! I'm trying to talk. Pick him up. It's awful. If you're having mental health problems, obviously, you know, get professional, whatever, if you can. Um, but also, I know it's it's struggly and it sucks. Um, but whenever you have those kind of things, sometimes it's nice to just kind of break out of your norm. Because sometimes it's your norm that's really getting you down. So if you're doing the same crap over and over and over again every day, day in, day out, that can wear you down pretty quickly. So I would say maybe to even do anything that's out of, you know, your usual. Sometimes that can help. Hi, Red Moon. You haven't seen me online. Oh, you're in the UK. I'm on every Friday this time, and I have been for a couple months, so I don't know. Maybe turn on my notifications. Oh. But yeah, glad to see you here. Not superstitious at all. Well, it's 10 p.m. here. Yeah. No, we're usually on 4 p.m. here, so that's now. But so you're six hours ahead then. All right, so today, um, that's so weird. I start sniffing when I start streaming. I haven't sniffled all day. Anyway. We're doing two things today. We're going to talk about how to part with your art, okay? Because I was talking to somebody yesterday about this, and, um, ooh, speaking of that, hold on. I want to make sure of something. Ha <laughs> ha. Um. Okay. Um, so we're going to talk about how to part with your art. But we're also going to be working on something for my Patreon, where um, I actually figured out something kind of neat I wanted to do a little bit different this month. So the Wheat Willer, the guy at the bottom there, um, he's this month's Mythical Monthly Guardian. And each month I usually choose between doing a print or doing stickers. Um, and usually the stickers are really big. Like, this was last month's. And these are the, the woolly bears. They're pretty big. Um, so these were them. But this month, I'm going to actually do stickers that are probably, oh gosh, maybe this big? Like maybe a little less than an inch around. But I'm also including a double pane print that they can actually take the stickers and it's kind of, I'm calling it a plug-and-play print, because I'm an alliteration whore, but a plug-and-play print where they can actually place the stickers of the little dudes on the print to wherever they want. So it's almost like it's still a print, and you've still got stickers, so if you don't want to use them for either of those things, whatever, that's fine. But um, this other way, you can actually customize your experience to be whatever you want. And since uh, this is the size typically of um, the prints that I do send, but I also send out a box. So, getting all this stuff I didn't anticipate showing. But I've got, this is one of the packages. This is for the Wooly Bear for last month. This is some ones that I'm waiting to kind of put all theirs together and then send it to them. But I take this, oh God. I put it in here, in this box, and I send it to you. And then, if it's a month where I decide, oh hey, a print would be cool, I also send out one of these, and I put something rigid in it so it doesn't get bent. So these fit nicely in here. So what I'm doing is I'm doing a basically two 5x7s that can be combined into this, uh, into this envelope. So... 
This ends up being more than six dollars every month, but that's okay. That's okay. That's not why I'm doing it. I'm not doing it to get paid anything. I'm doing it because I want to do it. Anyway, my phone just showed me on your. Own. That's weird. I don't know, Red Boom. Just put a reminder on your calendar. Just grab him, Chancho. Oh my gosh, he's extra crazy today. You know you're being bad. Maybe put a calendar reminder on your phone since it's always the same time every week. Um, there's a for sure stream Friday at 4 p.m. Central, um, which is 10 p.m. for you. And then there's sometimes I'll do a really, really chill stream where, like, I think I did one Tuesday this week. You gotta chill out, honey. It's okay. It's okay. Where I just kind of worked on the little guy at the bottom of the screen. So sometimes I'll do a random one that's super chill, other times it'll be like this and have kind of more of a directive, I guess. Okay, Chancho has some energy today. He really does. And honestly, Gabe, if you even wanted to take them for a walk, I'd be cool with that. Um, Bruni's pretty good today. She's been pretty chill, but Chancho is, is lit. I don't know why. Oh, thank you. I'm glad to hear that. I appreciate that. Okay, so since the Wheat Willer has all this mythos that I've like made about him, the idea then is that um, he does live and work with wheat. So I'm gonna have a scene here of wheat. Um, will you stop? Maybe it should be vertical. Now I'm torn, because the height would be nice, but I also wanted a couple on the ground. But wheat's really tall. That's a tough one. Maybe I won't do some on the ground. Maybe I'll be okay. So let's try it this way, I guess. Um, so there's this one drawing I did. I really liked in here. This is my Patreon sketchbook. Yeah, this one. So I'm probably gonna have one of the wheat stalks be something like this and one of the stickers be this. So he could either sit on the wheat or you could place the sticker somewhere else in the wild on your desk or something so it looks like he's sitting on something. So it's kind of up to, you know, the user, whatever they want to do. I just wanted to make stickers have more of a purpose for those that wanted more out of them. You know, I like the idea of like stickers being almost like paper doll type stuff where they can interact with things. I don't know. Hey, Alice. I'm glad, Alice. Yeah, you're gonna like this one because it's an interactive print. So you do get some artistic say in the print itself if you want. Otherwise you can keep them totally separate. It's up to you. Yeah, I thought about that, Meltsu, but I'm wondering, because if I do this way, I can get a nice big solitary wheat stock in there, but also if I wanted, I wanted some stuff like this, but if I want to, I could probably just have them sitting on the leaves. So maybe I'll do that, because the stickers won't be as big as last month. Um, they'll probably be on a little sheet about this big so I can fit them in the envelope, and there will probably be six of them. So... Alright, so I'm going to try to talk while figuring this out, I guess. So, how to part with your art. First of all, I want you guys to confess how many of you have problems either selling your art, giving it away, things like that. Like, just separating yourself from your artwork. Whether you like it, hate it, whatever. How many of you have a problem with that? I want you to confess to me. That'll make it personal. <laughs> Well, nope. glitter, be intrusive. I like it. James, Serenity. Now I want to know why you think you have a problem parting with it. Is it because you spent so much time with it, on it? Or is it because of maybe a different reason? Maybe 
you don't feel confident enough that somebody would want to buy it or you don't feel confident enough to gift it to someone maybe you're afraid of their rejection of it maybe you don't want to see them react to it what do you think it is oh serenity i think it's too bad to give away come on what have i told you before you know see and alice that's a really good start that is a really good start for me it's because I don't think they'll appreciate as much as I feel it should be so that actually brings up a good point Red Moon I'll get to that in a little bit too about people adopting your pieces right so I don't have a sketchbook anymore um, and you know what before I do this I know I can't talk passionately while drawing right now <laughs> I'm very one track at the moment so um, when you're giving away pieces or working on pieces um you y people are adopting them from you you think of it more like that than just buying a piece right like i don't have a sketchbook anymore because everything i do in my sketchbook now i see as a freelancer is sellable right that's all money right so because of that um i had to kind of learn early on when I, even before I started freelancing, I knew I'd have to get used to giving away pieces. And once you realize how much you're wasting their potential being in your possession, it really feels selfish. Because if you think about it more, I wouldn't say it's an egotistical view, but if you think about this piece could really make someone happy. And what's really cool is when you're out selling in the world and you see someone pick it up, like they're going through your little box or whatever, and they're like, oh, and they grab it and they pick it up and they freak out. And you think, well, I honestly wouldn't have probably done that with that piece, right? Like you yourself probably wouldn't have reacted that way. So the fact that this person found that piece that enthusiastically, like, that was meant for them. And sometimes like when you see that, you're like, yeah, I guess I had really actually made that for you. And I wouldn't have known this until I started going around kind of the US to different conventions. There are pieces that have followed me maybe two, three years from convention to convention, and they finally find their person. And it's incredible. It's a really cool feeling. Now I almost can't keep any piece to myself. Um, there's one I just sold at um, Dragon Con. Kristen, you'll remember this. Um, you have the other one. You have the, the painted one. But the Wheat Mouse going for the little uh, ladybug, I did a marker rendition of that. And I really thought about keeping that one. Um, but you know what? Whenever I think about keeping one, I remind myself that's what a scanner's for. You know, and you just got to make sure you scan something really well, you know, double check it, open it again before you do anything with the piece to make sure it's okay. And sometimes you can't scan it. Like James, in your case, I think you'll need to get yours professionally photographed. But as long as you have that record of it and it could make someone else happy, dude, seriously, there's no better feeling than that. And that's why I feel like I do art a lot of the time because otherwise it'd be sitting in my sketchbook or just in a pile somewhere here the only things I do keep are typically concept work for stories that I'm currently working on um, or that I plan to do something more with like I still have all my Grigor sketches for that book and I have all the sketches and concept work for the books I'm working on once those are done depending on how they're received those could be given away, I don't know, for charity. They could be, you know, given to people who really enjoy the books, you know, and feel real tied to them. So I almost feel like they gain more sentimental value if you hold on to those for a little bit until their final piece is revealed. Otherwise, you know, the stuff that I do feel really drawn to, I know it's because of a certain thing I put into it and that makes it all the more powerful. It's almost like if you were a jewel crafter or something, 
you know, who also could imbue magic into stuff. That jewel, my focus on that was a lot more powerful and the magic that's within that is a lot more strong. And I feel like that needs to go to someone else because, you know, it's not doing me any good. A lot of the time I'll tell people art is for you while you're doing it. You know, you're, you're getting your experience, you're upgrading your skill set, you're experimenting. It's for you while you're doing it. When you're done with it, it's not for you anymore. It's for someone else. And that's another reason I find it easier to give it away. Um, so with that said, uh, hopefully that helps you kind of realize, you know, why you're keeping things or maybe why you shouldn't. Um, also, I remember the first time I started framing some of my pieces, the ones that I was like, yeah, this one needs a frame. I plan on selling this one. It'll dress it up. It's like formalizing it, you know? Once I did that, it's like, <laughs> it's like the whole ugly girl turned into, you know, prom night girl. It's like, oh, I didn't know she could clean up so well. Sometimes you feel that about your art, and then once you frame it, you're like, damn, okay. You look good, you know? So that can help too. Let me click through here real quick. Yeah, and marketing. So James, depending on what you want to do with your art career, it is such a stupid necessary evil. Like if you do want to go freelance and just do this all the time, you have to market. And you have to borderline on what you feel is spamming people you're not actually ever spamming. It feels like it, but typically, it's really rare that somebody sees your post more than once. Um, but it is such a necessary evil, or else you don't eat. <laughs> you know, it's like risk annoying somebody a little bit more that day, or don't eat. You know, it kind of comes down to that. So it gets a little different when you know you don't have a day job. This is your bread and butter, literally. So you got to kind of figure, okay. I gotta market. You even have to put money into marketing, like Facebook ads and Instagram ads. Wow. Yeah, they're worth it, unfortunately, and I know they did that on purpose. But, so glitter, yeah, the not satisfied with the piece. That's a little bit different. Um, I'll show you though, now that I have actually a good example of it. Oh, Bogar, what are you doing here? Um, so I got to the point with my stuff where if I want to do something kind of out of my comfort zone, but I don't want to finish it, I've never seen someone else do this at a convention, you know, um, or anywhere really. I think I'm one of the first people to do this. I don't want to say that, but I do because I haven't seen anyone do this. But I'll put an unfinished piece in my originals folder. And I don't price it, and I put this at the bottom. Want me to finish this one? Let's talk. So someone then will pick this out and be like, oh, what's the story with this? Why, what is this at the bottom? I'm like, it's a half commission. So it's so they can actually pick what colors they'd want, anything like that. It's half commission. So I've already done this much. It's like an interactive coloring page, right? So like for this one, I would have probably done it as a white horse and a gold crown, pretty blah, right? But she was like, no, I want a black unicorn, I want it to be blah 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 blah. And then depending on if it's grayscale or color, I'm going to change the price on it. So you got to kind of have that prepared in your head. Um, but it's pretty cool, people get really excited about it because they get to kind of finish it too. You know, so you're working together on something and the base work's already there. So this has been pretty fun for me, honestly, because I don't have to think too much, and somebody else also gets their input in the piece, which, like I said, gets people excited. So I've been doing these a lot more, especially since I don't have a ton of time to do finished pieces. So if I just want to sketch, and maybe I don't feel like rendering, I'll just do a nice pencil piece and then throw it in the box, and if somebody likes it and they want me to finish it, there you go. It's pretty fun. I actually really like that. Um, yep, 
Yes, Alice, you're already to that point. It took me a few years to stop buying prints from people because not only would you accumulate this giant stack of prints, right? And you have no wall space really to put them or whatever. And some people actually rotate the artwork in their house and I am too lazy for that. I will not do that. So I actually stopped buying prints and just buy original art now because if you buy an original piece, it basically demands you frame it and display it but it's also guaranteeing that you don't fill up your walls too quick and what you do fill up your walls with is like worthwhile art that is worth something. It's an investment, you know? Um, so I think that's, that's really smart and like I said, it can be an investment. Sure, Red Moon. Just know that I get, you know, if you're asking for my <laughs> critique, you're gonna get it. Exactly. I, I totally understand that, Kristen. Like, they become really real. So, and I assume that's why you were kind of thinking about writing that book. I think that would be a wonderful way to kind of stay attached to them, you know, but also make sure you get all those good pictures of them. Get some really professional pics. Maybe for you, um, investing in like a really nice camera would be worthwhile, especially for, you know, taking product pictures of them and stuff. If you don't already. Maybe you already do. Um, first kind of I spent some time. Yeah, you really do, James. It sucks to, like, feel like you're annoying people, but it's better to really borderline on that. Like, would you rather post something once, have maybe a couple people see it, and that's it? Or would you like to post something two to three times during a week? It doesn't have to be the same day if you don't want. And risk maybe two people being like, oh, I already saw that, and they scroll on. It takes a lot for somebody to actually, like, unfollow you. So, and I think people understand the freelance life for the most part that you're going to need to get that out there, you know? So I think people are pretty understanding for the most part. And I think it's worth definitely marketing more. Um, especially if you're on multiple platforms, you're getting totally different demographics. Like, Twitter is completely different than Instagram. The types of people that use these, you know, platforms, totally different most of the time. Unless you're one of us and we have to use all of them. Different, different story. But, you know, you gotta be on everything too, it sucks. Especially when you just don't want to talk to anybody or do anything, you gotta just do it. <laughs> There you go, Meltzu. Just credit me. <laughs> I can't promise I can't make you cry. I don't know your tolerance level. <laughs> That'd be really smart, Kristen. Yeah. If you're not used to taking pictures and you were thinking about taking a class, Anytime I feel like anyone's thinking about taking a class, that's basically you saying, I should take a class, <laughs> you know? I think that's always a smart idea. If you've got the money, you got the time, you got the will, do it. Why not? Remember the watercolor postcard I sent you? Yeah, I do. We actually just looked at that the other day, Serenity. Um, I was on my phone and I have it in one of my pictures and I saw it and I was like, oh, remember when Serenity did this? Remember how t tiny Bruni was? And he's like, yeah, we only had one dog. <laughs> that lingering feeling? No, Serenity. Oh my God. I'm so glad you did it. It's like, I feel like it's like that thing where um, parents start telling people, hey, and this might be a stretch of an analogy, but let me get through it where they tell people, no matter what I look like, take a picture of me when I'm with my kid, because 10 years from now, I'd rather have those pictures where I look like shit than to not have any at all, right? So the fact that you did that for us, that's where you were at skill-wise, and I would have much rather had that than not at all. So it means so much more to me that you took the time to do it, you sent it to us, you, it was so personal, you know, and regardless of how you think it looked, we think it was great. 
and we loved it. So it matters more that you did it. And I think with art, it comes down to that just basically just do it, right? Who cares what it looks like? No one else for the time you're doing it is seeing it except you, unless you're streaming. But you get used to that. That's another thing too. That's another level. Once you get used to how you just do art, I don't want to say I don't make bad art anymore, but I don't make art that I can't do anything with. But I think that's because my mindset has switched to my time is so precious and I've worked so hard to get where I am that I don't make art I can't use in one way or another. Um, even if like a whole piece, like if this whole thing turns out like crap, if I still have at least one stock that's good, I can make that work. And it wasn't wasted. Like you have to make sure that the things you're spending time on are worthwhile when it comes to being a freelance artist. And that can sound scary at first, but once you work up to being there, everything makes sense. It's like seeing the Matrix. <laughs> yeah, Twitter's great. Uh, a lot of Twitch people actually use Twitter primarily, which I always forget to say on Twitter when I'm streaming. That's one of my sins. Um, but it's pulling teeth to get people from Instagram to Twitch. It just doesn't happen. Like Instagram, you gotta do Instagram Live basically, but Twitter is primarily Twitch users. So knowing these sorts of things can totally help too. Uh, let's see. Of course, Serenity, we love it. We'll always love it. Um, okay, so Red Moon, your pig picture. First of all, did you trace it? I need to know if you traced it or not. Be 100% honest. All right, I'm gonna start doing thumbnails now, but also still kind of talking about this. So the thing with parting with your art is also just start giving away to people. Like do a couple things, like your friend likes nature stuff, make them a tiny two by two, three by three watercolor of an acorn. Give it to them, okay? Start pumping things out that you get used to giving away. Start doing art drops, right? Start doing, um, ooh, can you throw in a link to Pavkins? So sketch card uh, clubs are things where you're doing a sketch card every month under a certain theme, and then you do maybe like three of them, and then you send them to this person that then mixes them all up and sends them to someone else, and you get some too. So that will actually help you disperse them too, and also to not really know who's receiving them, which is also a really good thing to learn. Um, that might be like level three, where somebody's getting your work that you don't even know, right? Like they didn't pick it out or whatever. So if you've got all these kind of anxieties of, you know, someone getting it, someone wanting it, all this kind of stuff, these can really, really help. Um, and then once you eventually get to that point, um, then, you know, you can start going to cons and see people start interacting with your art. No, Red Moon, it's not. It's so accurate I just want to know that's all and if you didn't trace it that's fantastic but I just need to know I guess or when you look at reference I mean it looks pretty spot on like and your style is really interesting too so to me it's interesting because your ink work isn't quite there but your understanding of form is so sometimes that's like a, a disconnect in my head if I see that. I wonder, well, did they supplement it, you know, one thing this way and then, you know, using the other way? Okay, so you did trace it, basically. Okay, try to get away from tracing as quick as possible. That's going to actually be a giant crutch that you won't be able to shake once you've done it too much. Um, also, no professional artist trace. Um, so get away from that as soon as possible. Start with the, uh, you know, the circle way of knowing things. Uh, how to, how do you measure things is key. Like if you want to be a good artist, you're gonna have to learn. Like okay, here I'll show you because I need to talk with visual aids. Um, 
So if you were going to do this piece, right? And let's say your picture is my reference. You're gonna wanna actually, you know, I do the sphere way, some people have kicked that. And then figure out, I've drawn animals so much that I can kind of figure this out, but the eye would be right here, right? And after I've drawn the sphere and figure out where the eye is, you know, and where kind of the ear is in conjunction with the eye, then this becomes your measuring tool. This becomes your ruler. So from the eye over to the ear, it's about two more eyes over, right? So then you can figure that out and then look at the angle of how the ear attaches to the head, right? And then the head comes off of the ear about one eye up, right? And then this other ear is about, let's see, the angle is about from the middle of the pupil, straight up, a little bit off, and then that's about as many eyes up as it is. Oh, eyes, thank you. Appreciate the sub. So then you go up and then you figure out, okay, the tip of the ear is gonna be basically diagonal from the pupil here too. And then it's about one, two, three, maybe four eyes up, right, from the head. So you figure that, right? So you're going to use the tools you've made for yourself. And that's when you know you're starting to become a better artist is when you can do that appropriately. And that's going to actually teach you to be able to draw anything. Honestly, if I had to say one thing to be able to draw anything, it's how to use what you've already established in your picture as a measurement tool. Okay? I can't tell you how important that is. I use that all the time with all the pet portraits I do. Everything. It's all I use. Um, so that once you've gotten to that point, sometimes you can end up eyeballing it. So I know the nose is over here, and I know it's you know diagonal from this. So I can just kind of start doing it here you know but get away from tracing today stop doing it today um, the lighting though on your ink work is actually super good um, maybe around the back of the ear it's a little rough because I don't think the Sun would be going through there but on the chin area that's really good um, but I think your ink style is fine it's really old school it's uh, kind of medieval so I like your style, I just want you to get away from tracing ASAP. Um, and I like your, your limited palette. Um, also, don't use black to shade, okay? Um, black to shade will just dull down all your colors, it's going to make everything muddy. Use a different color, use a purple, use, depending on whatever your base color is, you're going to change your shadow color, okay? Um, and some people get really crazy with that. Some people do like a green shadow for red. Don't go there until you know how to do it, right? But just as a rule, you're going to be stronger at choosing colors if you do not use black to shade. Good. Yeah, your un untraced stuff looks great. Keep doing that. You're on a good road. Don't uh, don't fall back into tracing because it's going to be that crutch, like I said. And sometimes, I'm actually going to say almost all the time, people like me and Gabe, who we know how to draw, you know, and we know when someone's tracing, we can tell. Like, I could tell. Um, so really it's not doing anything for you if you trace it and people can tell. What was that? Well, thank you, Iest. I appreciate that. Hi, yeah, Muffins. No, oh, yeah, lurk, 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 lurk. Hi, Emily. We miss you, too. How are you? You seem busy. We're good. We're good. <laughs> I did shoot down tracing with you, Alice. You're right. Um, but yeah, hopefully that helps. Um, 
Okay, so a horror story about giving away art, you know, because this is the whole how to part with your art thing. The beginning of this stream for those just coming in, if you have problems letting your art go, whether you're giving it away or selling it, you're, you'll want to rewatch this. But um, there was one incident where someone bought a piece of mine and I didn't want them to have it, mainly because I knew their... Uh, What's the word? The, uh... What's the word I always talk about? For some reason I'm blanking on it. Intention? The, yes! Thank you! Their intention. His intention... I don't know why I thought of... The, the, I couldn't think of that. Anyway, his intention was horrible. It wasn't the, driven by the piece at all. It wasn't anything like that. I had heard from someone else that was helping me at my booth that they overheard him telling his friend that they were going to buy an expensive piece from me to try to date me like to try and impress me and butter me up and once I heard that I was pissed okay but I couldn't really let this guy know and he didn't pick a piece that was like too important to me so I was like okay well, yeah, whatever but I still was mad about that um, I've always thought about too like um, if I had a racist or someone come up to my booth after that I've heard that they were racist or something, would I turn them away? Something like that. And it's like, what do I do? So, I mean, that's up to each and every artist, you know, for you to decide kind of if you want your art to go somewhere or not, but have a good reason. You know, I still sold it to him because I was like, well, maybe he'll, he'll figure out a good place for it. You know, so sometimes that, that hurts a bit. And I think that's also why I could never work for a rescue. Because <laughs> if I know somebody's, like, not okay, and somehow they get the pet, I'd be devastated. You know, but... So how do you turn those people down? Um, I would usually say, oh, I'm holding that actually for someone else. I forgot to take it out. I'm so sorry. You could say that. Or if it's, like... A racist or someone and you want to start some shit you can tell them exactly why oh I don't sell to people that you know don't agree with this this or this th whatever you know it's gonna peeve them eh. I mean depends on the type of person you are you can do it kind of unabrasive or you could be confrontational it's up to you really it's your art you get to do what you want with it right so if you don't want it to go to someone choose the way and the manner you turn them down that sort of thing and like I said, I wasn't totally tied to this one as like 50% like I love this piece, I, I don't care about this piece. Because um, another trick too is to make sure that you get to a point with your art where, how do I say this, like, oh my god, what is happening? Is that sunlight? That's sunlight. Um, where you care about it enough not to, if that makes sense. So. You want to care about your art to the point you're still doing it, you're still learning from it. It's providing something for you, right? Um, but you also want to not care too much about how it ends up. Like, ah, okay, that one sucked, whatever, throw it away. Because your art is not a reflection of you, right? So if it sucks, that doesn't mean you suck. That could mean you were having a bad day. Somebody was talking over your shoulder and you were just listening to them while you were drawing. Like, if I was drawing right now, this would probably be a lot crappier than if I was focusing on it solely. But that doesn't mean I'm terrible, you know? Um, so being able to just draw without caring about where it ends up, but still caring about what it is, is very important. And I think a lot of professional artists are really good at that. And I did feel a switch once I got to that point where there was that anxiety and stuff, that whole, I, I remember going through the whole, uh, it has to be perfect or else I'm wasting paper or I wasted time. I remember being there and that was probably, the last time I felt that was probably in like 2013, 2012, somewhere in there, before I went freelance and before my life did a 180. Um, I was still in that mindset and there was nobody around at the time telling artists that whole it doesn't have to be perfect thing right that it hadn't happened yet like this revolution is pretty new but um, 
since then, since I had a giant uproar and once I went freelance, I realized everything had to be done pretty quickly and at a certain quality level once I got there. And the most important thing that you can do if you're not at the point you want to be yet as an artist is quantity. And I, I know some people are going to probably buck that, but I'm telling you, just draw all the goddamn time. I don't care what it is. It could be on napkins, whatever. You just have to draw a lot. Okay? And then once you've drawn a lot and you get to this point where you're developing a style and a content that you enjoy, right? Because I did this whole rant the other day about um, your style and what everybody says is a style is just the things you decide to include and exclude from the drawings you do. So if you don't like drawing the sternum in a character, don't draw it anymore. You know it's there because you knew to exclude it. Don't draw it anymore. That becomes part of your style. Oh, they never draw sternums. Maybe you like um, something that's kind of in right now is everybody goes crazy on eyelashes, right? Like crazy. Under eyelashes, over eyelashes, it just looks like fur stuck to an eyeball, right? That's a style choice. Somebody at one point was like, oh my god, I love heavy eye stuff. And they just went crazy with it. And because they liked to draw it, it became part of their style and they always wanted to do it. The thing with art is creating stuff you always want to do, right? Otherwise it's not art because you don't want to do it. It seems really dumb once you think about it that way, right? So the things you want to do and don't want to do become your style. And at one point I was like, you know, I can draw humans, but every time I draw one, I don't feel a connection to it. I don't care about it. So I stopped drawing humans. Now I draw little spirit creatures and animals and micro worlds, and I am happy. Okay? Doesn't mean I can't draw humans. Because I can. I went through that. I know how anatomy works because it does help me with my animal drawings too to know that. But once I got there, once I did it, I was like, I don't want to do it. So get out. Don't do it. No one's forcing you to. And if somebody is, then it's not art. Right? Art's from in here. That's why fan art's bad too. Because it's not, it's not from in here. It's not from in here. It's not from your brain or your heart. <laughs> Make it, you know what you want it to be you know because these things in here no one else can see them until you make them out here why did you laugh uh, oh really you yeah, call me mr said, miyagi that's it in here no in here well sometimes i like breaking things down into smaller words just because i feel like it hits people better you know, if I use a big word sometimes, when I'm talking, I'm like, shit. I feel like that just, it distracts someone. Because then they're thinking about the word. So I feel like being direct and using smaller words helps. Not calling anyone dumb, but just saying it, it absorbs better. Anyway. Um, yeah. Red Moon. Here are my opinions on fan art. Go to this website and read it all. There you go. Don't ever do it again. <laughs> it's gonna hurt your uh, creative muscle, okay? In the beginning, it's okay when you're learning how to draw, it's training wheels, but after that, the people that sell it, that's, it's so morally bad, and not even morally bad, but it's bad for your artistic soul. It rots you, okay? Make everything from your heart and from your head. Because everything else has been done out there. Don't redo something that's already out there. Give people something new. They'll love you for it. No, Serenity. I think that's fine. I think for you right now, if I had to be completely honest with you, you're creating art solely for you just to stay happy. That's what it looks like to me. And there's nothing wrong with that. Art is therapy, okay? For a lot of us, we can make it into a job eventually. But even then, you have to figure out how to make some art therapy and some art for work. Okay, so both are very important, right?
Okay, Red Moon. Um, I think how you're using color is pretty good on this one. Um, I actually like how wonky it is because I can tell that, yeah, you didn't trace it. Um, I think that what I told you about the measuring tool, like if you use that right eye to figure out everything else, like I could say that you would, you should self critique this one. Take that right eye because that one feels the most correct. Take that and use that against your reference and see how far off you were and even take it into Photoshop and mark with red where the eye should be. So like figure out how many eyes away the left eye is from the right on your reference and then do the same thing on your drawing and then mark where it should be. And then after you've gone through the whole face, you can figure out, kind of grade yourself really. And then, you know, down here, the nostrils, one's up higher than the other. I mean, the mouth is a little bit downturned on the left where it should be upturned. Things like that. You'll be able to tell though, you just have to do it more. Okay, do it more and do it right, meaning using that measurement tool. Highlights and see. How can one quit their soul-sucking job to make art full-time if you don't have a sellable or marketable style? That, the fact you said that means you need to work until you're at a point where you can say you've got that. So with the sellable, marketable style, you'll know when you're at a point when you're confident enough with your work that you can do that. If you say that, what you just did, you're telling me you're not. So you need to get to a point with your art where you are okay with it, meaning you just need to do it more. So the whole quality versus quantity thing, I'm a very firm believer, and so is Gabe, that you do more drawings in the beginning, not worrying about quality, okay? You just need to do drawings. You need to draw more because the more you draw, the more you can figure out what you like and dislike about the things you're drawing, and then you can start narrowing what you're drawing into your style. Okay, and that's what your style becomes, the things that you omit and include with your drawings, okay? And that only comes with doing it a ton of times, okay? So you need to draw and draw and draw and draw and draw and be like, I don't like adding this, I want to add elf ears, I don't want to draw this type of uh, muscle, I don't want this muscle in there, I think it's ugly, I'm going to leave out that line, you know, things like that. You learn what you do and don't want in a drawing and that becomes a style and with that comes confidence too because you're learning what you don't want and you do want and that's confidence that's why people in their 30s and 40s are really confident because they've learned in their life what they do and don't want right I don't want drama I don't want to go to bars I don't want to have a family I don't want this sort of stuff that's what you need to do with your art and the only way to get there is to do it a lot Okay, quantity in the beginning. Once you get to that point, you start to learn how to be more critical of what you're doing. That's where quality comes in. So quality is an after quantity thing. You can't really do both at once and be able to excel as quickly as you'd like. If you want the fast track to being there, being where you want to be, where you want art full, full time, quantity first. Okay, and I mean draw all the time, at least every day, if not multiple times a day. And you will start feeling like you're chiseling away at a giant block of who you're supposed to be. And you'll figure out what you like and what you don't. I don't want to draw humans. I can draw humans, sure. And I do for freelance jobs. But when it comes to my art and what I project myself as to everyone else out there, I don't want it to be humans. I don't want people to come to me for humans. I want them to come to me being like, oh, she does this cute animal art. You got to see it. They're wearing clothes and fantasy and blah, blah, blah. That's what I like to hear. And I know I'm succeeding because at conventions, people will drag other people over to me and say those things. So that means I'm doing it right. The only way I got there, though, is by figuring out who I was and who I wanted to be and project as an artist, which took quantity. Okay, because I was in a soul-sucking job too, um, and I hated what I was doing. It was not for a good reason. It was not in a good place, and it was being wasted. My skill, not talent, because talent's the wrong word, skills were being wasted. Okay, so once I figured that out, I needed to learn 
what's my style? I was in mobile games. The whole thing with mobile games, you don't have a style. You're a jack of all trades, you can do any style, anything that comes to you, you can replicate it, you can do it, you have no sense of self. You have no style because you can do everything. I used to be very proud of that. And honestly, for that industry, it's perfect. It's perfect. If you like to do that and you get bored of one style, whatever, that might be for you. Because you can do and replicate all these kinds of things and you're very valuable in that industry. But for me, I didn't like not having an artistic identity. After a while, when people were like, well, what are you into? Because they couldn't tell. That's where fan art hurts, too. They can't tell who you are, right? If I'm drawing nothing but rodents, insects, birds, things like that with clothes, fantasy setting, sepia tone, if you can sum up yourself and your style using words like that, you know what you're doing. If you can't, you got to work on it and you got to figure it out. And I think that's the hardest part for people is the whole style search is really a self search and they need to just learn about themselves more. Honestly, talent doesn't exist in my opinion when it comes to art, really. Um, talent for me, I hate when people say, oh, you're so talented at conventions. I'll take it because it's like, I can't correct a stranger. That's rude, right? Oh, but I'd like to. But I, when I go to other artists, I say, oh, you're so skilled. This is so good. Because that, they always are taken aback because they realize that took time. Skill denotes that it took time. You honed this. You spent hours doing this. It's a bigger compliment than talent. Talent implies that it's God-given. You're born with it. You don't even work to have it. Talent to me is a dirty word. Okay, for the most part, in the art realm, if you're talented in mathematics, maybe, or singing, but even then, that can be skill, too. So I would almost always rather default to saying someone is very skilled than very talented, because there are prodigies, sure, like, maybe Kim jong a you know prodigy? I, I think if you're 10 and you can draw like Kim jong -gi, then, then you're, then you're a prodigy. Talent. Yeah, there yeah. are prodigies that, yeah, they are just miraculous, literally miraculous. Maybe that guy that can take one helicopter ride around and recreate the city to 100% accuracy. But he's also, um, what's the word? He's uh, autistic. He's autistic. So. But that doesn't matter. He's, I would that call that talent. talent. Yeah, he's a the, prodigy. The problem is that this whole talented thing comes from the fact that the word talent is used for an artist so like no uh, it's used for musicians too well, it's no, used for a lot of things like no, that no, but it's like uh, i gotta book, book some talent for this show oh we're we're seen as the talent yeah okay well i could see that being the problem so the normal people are just taking it and they're like oh you're talented but i highly suggest and i've been trying to spread this i don't want to say it's like i don't want to use the religious overtones or whatever but Spread the word that tell other people to compliment people by saying they're skilled. It feels so much better, you know, and as an artist, if you're an artist, wouldn't you like that more too? Every time somebody says you're so talented, I feel like they, you know, they're like, you're so talented, I could never do this. And I'm like, yes, you can. You just choose what to put your time into. If you dropped everything, you know, whatever you're doing and start drawing, two to three years, you'd be dope. If that's all you did, like, that's what we did, right? That's all we did. So anybody can do this. I highly think that everyone can do it. It's just people decide where to put their focus. And maybe you're one of those people that splits their focus up among a lot of things, which means that you're gonna be kind of good at a lot of things, but you'll never be really good at one thing, right? So depending on how you want to do things. There you go. Um, so even Gabe and I are technically seen as a little bit unfocused with our work. Yeah, we have a style, you know, but we're not as focused as some of our um, peers, right? Some people just solely use one medium and they're really damn good at that one medium. I would get bored. Gabe would get bored. 
you know, we're the type of people that would get bored. So our style comes through in the content we create. What's our subject matter? See, so this is, this is interesting about style is your style may not have anything to do with the medium. It might have to do with your subject matter, right? People know Gabe for robots. People know me for, you know, the little mice, the micro worlds, little fantasy things. Not necessarily what we use. So you could, you know, figure out if you're better at a medium and you just want to focus on that and kind of do whatever you want regarding subject matter or the opposite. So there's so many things you can do with style and you're going to have so many styles. I have different styles depending on the medium I use. Okay, so if I'm doing something in marker, it's completely different than watercolor. It's completely different than digital. I mean, look at the little guy at the bottom there, okay? He's super my mobile game style, that I call it. But, like, if you look at anything else I do, um, that's, like, even my marker stuff, like I'm working on this right now, it's not the same style as him, right? No one would think that's the same person. Who cares? That's okay. You know what his style is? His style is specific to the product, okay? So a product I make all has the same style, right? Same with my pet and armor portraits. They're all done in the same style, which that helps me as an independent artist be able to advertise that product because it's consistent. And the best thing about that is I have a book of those right and they're all consistent in the book so I can have people and I do every convention forever that I've been doing this they know exactly what they're gonna get without even seeing it so people pay me up front 500 bucks sometimes depending on what they get um, and they walk away okay they trust me to make something that looks like that and that's when you know you've done a good job marketing because you just sold someone an idea. When you can sell somebody in an idea, you're doing it right. So I give myself props for that one at least. Would you and Gabe be interested in an art trade? <laughs> yeah, but it'll probably have to be next year, Serenity. But yeah, we'd do that. The rest of this year is nuts. Uh. And that's fine, Alice. If you can't be rude to a stranger, just say why you can't give away that piece. Or say that you forgot to take it out, you're holding it for someone else. I actually did that once. But I'm glad I did. Bernie, what's wrong? Gabe, can you tend to her a bit? Exactly, Cactus. Yeah, the you're so talented. It kind of stings. But the thing that... I kind of think to myself is their intentions. I always come back to people's intentions and it actually, if I could tell you guys any bit of actual life advice, not even art advice, it's to always look at people's intentions. Okay. Try your hardest to see where they're coming from. Cause even in the cases of some people that have, uh, like mental issues and things, they usually mean really well, but they can't, conduct it or communicate it as well as some of us but if they're trying really hard you give them the benefit of the doubt so when people say you're so talented yeah it's not the best way they could say it but I try to look at the fact that they're trying to tell me they enjoy my work they find it you know good and you know you get you get it from that you know but that's where fan art's a bad thing okay I promise not to go on this, but their intention is usually to make money off your nostalgia and it's manipulative. It's not good. Some people will say, oh, but I do it because I love this IP. Why are you stealing from it? Because you're directly stealing money from them and the thing you love. They don't see that. And then as a consumer, if you buy that, you're helping them steal. You're giving them money instead of that thing you both enjoy. It's really messed up like once you get into the psychology of it it's just oh there's no good fan art to sell ever no good reason the only good way to give someone fan art is for free 
like, oh, you like Doctor Who? I like Doctor Who. I did this thing with Doctor Who. Here, you'd probably like this too. Because then you know it's from a place of love. You know, you both love this thing. You give it to them for free. When it's for free and you're giving it away, it's out of love. When you want money for it, it's a bad thing. Anyway, here's that website again. If you want all my reasons, you can go there. Otherwise, I try to keep it tiny now. Because back in the day, I would rant for four hours about this. I've gotten better. <laughs> I've gotten much better. Yeah, styles change across media all the time. And my animation style, totally different from all my static styles. It's okay. The best thing about having different styles is it shows that you're willing to experiment. You're bringing more knowledge and more, like, just skill from other things back to what you normally do. You know? And there's it, that can't be bad because you're always learning. You're always growing. When you aren't learning and you aren't growing anymore and you're just pumping out the same thing all the time because you know people like it, that's not art anymore. That's business. And I've told people this and they get mad because they're like, I'm an artist. I'm doing art. Yeah, but why? Intention, right? What's their intention? Oh, I, I, I mean, people like it. Do you like it? No, I'm kind of bored of it. Why are you doing it? Right? Anyway. Oh. <laughs> Bye, Emily. I hope you're okay. Hope the baby's good, too. Sorry, I gotta go through this. Secret Santa. I would love to do another Secret Santa for people. Gabe and I probably won't be able to do it again, but if somebody wants to run it again this year, oh my god. I think last year Cass did it? Or Glitter? Glitter and someone else did it, and it was really nice of them. But I totally think we should have another Secret Santa. I think that's so awesome. Where's the donate button? It's uh, below the video. If you're on mobile, I'm not sure. But there's a tips button if you really want to give me one. Or you can sign up for my uh, Patreon tier where you actually get this little guy at the bottom. And I love making them, but... Oh, cactus. Where did Bruni go? Oh, honey, what are you doing? Aren't you tired? Aren't you tired? You're so cute. You want to go backyard? You want to go in the backyard? Papa will take you if you want to. You look tired, honey. You should go night night. Go night night. Okay, back to this. Sorry. I feel like I just ranted until I'm just dumb and mad. Um, okay, so if I had... I want that one there. What's funny about this plug and play print is that it's not going to actually make sense to the story. <laughs> okay, I'm going to have to talk to you later about that because I don't know if I should do this now if it doesn't align with the story. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Do you think I, I should still do it? Oh, yeah, I don't think about it. It's, it's separate enough, right? Yeah. Okay. I do have an international version for the tier two, if anybody's interested in that. Here, I'll give you a link. So on my Patreon, I do Mythical Monthly Guardians, which are, if I had to pitch it to you, kind of accurate to what it is, I would say it's if Studio Ghibli did Pokemon, but also had like folklore about each creature. Um, 
So you can actually go here and see. Uh, and under Curious Collector, that one's the domestic one, the US one, but right under that is the international version. So the difference is it's $3 more expensive a month and you get a package every three months. However, the whole reason it's that much is so it pays for the shipping over time. So it technically is still $6 a month, but that extra three is going towards the international shipping. So you don't actually have to worry about shipping, it's included in it. Um, same with the other one, like shipping is included. I actually don't make any money on these tiers, but I'm okay with that because it's actually allowing me to do something I really want to do. And that to me is enough to not get paid for it. Just to be able to be paid for the time to do it. Which is basically all you're paying for, I guess. Um, Alright, so... Yeah. That's enough to go off of. This is a thumbnail. Okay, this is all you need. <laughs> I usually do thumbnails. Uh, honestly, I've gotten to the point where I don't need to do a lot of thumbnails. Um, I just do maybe one to three, if any. It is good to do at least one, so you can make sure what you're thinking aligns with your hand. Sometimes you're having a bad day and your hand doesn't do what you want it to. So that helps you figure out, is it a good day? Is it a bad day? Um, but what I'm probably going to do is leave this one pretty blank and not detail it because I'm going to just copy that one in all honesty. So and then this is a place you could put a sticker. I have the moon there. And then on my website actually I also have it so you can buy past guardians. Like let's say you joined the tier now. You missed almost a full year of guardians. So you can pick and choose through here which ones you'd actually like to have, and I'll make them again and ship them to you. Um, those are at the bottom, so you can see what type of creatures they've done. So technically, this Wheat Willer is one of my pips. My pips are flower deities, and what's really funny is I've ended up doing these every other month without even realizing I've been doing them every other month. So. Um, I was thinking about if they actually are part of the pips, and at first I was like, nah, they're different, blah blah blah, but then I drew a picture of him next to another pip, and he has a crush on her, and I was like, okay, okay, he's, he's a pip, and I mean, he governs over wheat, and makes sure it's, you know, always healthy, and he's its caretaker, so that is what a pip is, so... This month, he's a pip. You're welcome, Lights and Sea. Quantity. You got it. Have a good night. What would happen if an international person would accidentally pledge to the non-international? I can usually see that. So when somebody pledges, uh, you need to provide your address. So when I go look, and if the address is international, I'll message them and be like, hey, you should actually be on this other tier, um, and I just kind of correct them. So, it's, like, Patreon's pretty good with how they organize everything, so it's really easy to see where people are. A little bit. Is she so fussy? Who is she? Maybe get her a toy. Maybe you're not enough, Gabe. Get the, get the gear, maybe. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. There's probably enough yams left. Um, so maybe spinach and peas, and then the rice and the turkey, chicken. I mean, there aren't a lot of peas left unless you open up a new bag. Which, go ahead, it's fine. So just peas. Sometimes I'll, if there's just like a couple left in a bag, I'll mix it with something else. But also the yams. Yeah, just do a little bit. 
I mean, you know how much, like, ratio to do, I think. Yeah, so Serenity, um, since you have a Patreon, if you go into... If you go into your dashboard, I don't know how much you've poked around in there, but go with Papa. He's getting you some foods. Gabe, just say chicken. Hey, chicken? Like, show her the box or whatever. The Tupperware, please. Want chicken? Go with Papa! Apparently one of my packages was delivered, Gabe. Can you grab it? Okay. So if you go in, and then you go to Patrons, assuming you're on the desktop site, if you're not, um... Their app is okay, but the app doesn't show you as much as the other thing is. And then Relationship Manager will show you kind of everything you need to know. Um, okay. Only desktop? Okay, then it should be really easy. Um, it's on the left side. You click Patrons, Relationship Manager. And then there's a, also a thing called Exit Surveys, where when somebody leaves your Patreon, it feels really bad. Like, I always get really upset when someone leaves. But you can see the reason they left. They can, when they leave, it has to say, you know, why did you decide to leave? And they use a drop down. It's like, well, my financial situation changed, blah, blah, blah. Which is the most, that one feels the best because it's like it's not because of you. <laughs> but yeah. Like, I always worry that maybe they didn't like that month's guardian and then they left and I'm like mm. okay so I'm gonna write down a couple so that there can be one sliding and be one sitting maybe one sleeping maybe one magicking ing I should have just said casting, but it's not really a spell. I don't know how you... And then running. So that's five. What else do they do? They dance. This one's dancing. So sleeping, sitting. Maybe another one's sitting. Oh, I don't have one standing. Maybe standing. You okay, Butters? Okay. Oh my gosh, you guys can't even see this. Okay. I wish you could see this better. You recently posted a photo of Butters on Instagram. Is that the general link for fur kids? Um, yeah, I think that's actually, as far as it'll grow, um, Chancho's hair actually falls because this is really heavy. His hair is a lot like a, a lady's hair. It feels like a woman's hair. It's really funny. Um, I actually kind of trimmed them up today. I'm trying to get to the point where I can actually um, groom them myself because I think it'd be really fun. So I've been looking up uh, how-to videos on how to groom Pomeranians specifically, because every dog is different. Oh my god, there's a dog called a Poli. I think that's what it's called, Poli. And they actually grow dreadlocks. Like, their, their hair comes out almost as a sheet. And the way to groom them, I watched a groomer do it on a video, she pulled apart their dreads and it just starts creating more dreads on its own it's really crazy so like if it were my hair um like if she had dreads here right let's say these were dreads 
um, she actually just pulls it apart. See how that's together like that? She would pull it apart and then just leave it, and the dreads just start making their own dreads again. It's really weird. It took ages. I've been doing it a lot, like, on a, on a very low scale. Today I leveled up, so to speak. I bought some specific scissors and everything. But the past two weeks, um, I've been trimming them up and doing sanitary cuts and things. So I'm learning. And I think once I get it down, it'll be good. Because already today, I gave both of them haircuts. Probably took me a half an hour, and they're cleaned up real nice. You know, it's not show-worthy or anything by any means, but um, they look good. So this is the moon. Uh, let's see. But a dachshund is short-haired, right? Unless you've got a long hair. Do you have a long-haired dachshund or a short hair? The short hair should take no time at all. But if it's a long hair, yeah. Hooli. Ah. Pull over. Oh my god. I just can't see how those dogs must be happy. Like, I was looking at it, and uh, while she's grooming it, she said... And they can't see, but the owners like it that way. And I was like, but what about the dog? You know, like, I would at least clip their hair back or something, but since they're dreads, they're, like, in their face. And she said, and the owner likes it that way. Uh, that almost seems like a quality of life issue to me. I'd be like, you know, can I at least trim it or pull it back or something? So... The dog can see? <laughs> I don't know. Oh, for like a sheep. Yeah, that's how Butters is. Like, Butters is really strange for a palm because usually palms, they just explode, you know, and they're just like a puff. Or they're like Chancho, where their hair is like super soft and just heavy and it falls, right? Hers is curly and doesn't puff exactly it's wavy you know she looks like a little lamb like you're explaining so that's been kind of tough to figure out but look up grooming videos on those pulleys it's weird. She said it's $80 and all she does for like an hour or two is just pull this dog's hair apart. That's it. And I'm saying here like the owner could do this while watching TV. Like why would you? That's so dumb. <sighs> Dancing queen. Oh. We uh, when we come home, Bruni she grabs a toy, and I always call it the offering because she brings it to you. But she grabs a toy and she comes over and she, she wiggles her butt and goes in kind of a circle and keeps wiggling her butt and we call her Cha-Cha Wiggles. We're like, Cha-Cha Wiggles! Cha-Cha Wiggles! And she starts flipping out. It's the cutest damn thing. I love it. I'll try to get it on video. I don't know why I haven't yet. I would love to. What lead type? <sighs> well, Gabe, where did you get this one pencil? Gabe, what? where'd you get this pencil again that you were like, hey, what about this? Was it Target? Target? Yeah. Gabe got this at Target. Um, it. It's just a Stadler. Uh, it's kind of shaped like a triangle, sort of. I don't know. Uh, it was cool though because usually you find mechanical pencils and they have teeny tiny lead and you guys know me I don't like tiny lead. I think tiny lead is supposed to be for those that are graphite artists only Okay, or if you primarily draw on a 2x2 two two square Okay, anything under 0.7 You shouldn't be messing with unless you're like an actual graphite artist, but this is a 1.3 millimeter uh, my usual is a 0.9, which is a step up from the 0.7, but depending on the size of the paper, if I'm being really loose and just getting ideas out, I love big lead. 
and um, I forget when the last time I told you guys this was, but remember to always use big lead. It's going to keep you from doing details too soon. It's going to force you to be really general with your drawings, and that's what you want. Because if I was using small lead, I wouldn't be able to see this as well as I can, and you guys can't even like probably see it as well like it you wouldn't be able to see it if it was a lesser lead so that's good but also it just it helps me to stay loose using bigger lead um, Gabe and I swear by it and especially if you're starting you know you're starting out using small lead can actually really hinder your your learning I'm gonna say it's gonna get you obsessed with detail too quickly because it's a small lead and that's not what you should be worried about when you're starting to draw when you're starting to draw you need to learn about you know the bigger picture where it's shapes and silhouettes and you know language shape language you need to be concerned with that not like eyelashes on an eye i mean yeah it can be fun but until you know how to draw an eye you can't really do that you know and I'd like to think that like my friend uh, Tim who does primarily graphite he needs that hell yeah because he knows how to use it he knows what it's for so being a graphite artist that is for him for those of us who do all types of different stuff like for when I'm sketching use big lead and then if you realize oh this is too big size it down for the thing you need it to be smaller for. It's like using a brush. Think of a pencil like a brush, okay? Would you do a giant watercolor wash or something with, you know, a tiny little, you know, a tiny little brush? Would you do that? No! You would use, you know, this big honking guy here. Use the right tool for the right job. If you're not a graphite artist, you do not need... Look at this. I have a point three, I think. And I think I still carry it. Yeah. Point two. I bought this when I lived with Tim. Um, I haven't used it. I haven't used it since. Because I ended up thinking about my process and I use pencil to usually go to pen. And then with the pen, that's when I'm actually doing my detailing. So I don't actually do detailing with the point two. I usually do detailing with a 005 pen, right? So for me, that's my point two. Tim might use this because he's a graphite artist and that makes sense for him and that's what he should be using. For the rest of us, we need to find our point two with whatever else we're doing. Does that make sense? No, it's not a makeup brush. It's actually a, a watercolor wash brush. Um, and then there's another one here, also for washes. So this one you gotta have the right kind of canvas for, because that's a lot of water, you know. I actually use it for my pencil shavings. I take it and I go like that, because <laughs> it's fun. And sometimes I have tools for fun. Um, but my actual, like, brushes are pretty, uh, pretty modest in terms of sizes, so. Palm size paper. Um, well, then that lead is probably big for that paper, I guess, cactus, but, um, I mean, do you find yourself doing too much to my specifics instead of having the overall piece done first because if you like draw a head and kind of a body and whatever but you go in and you immediately start doing like you know eyes or the face or whatever you might be doing that too soon and it might be because of the pencil honestly hi sniggle yeah, we use the IPVO. Actually, Gabe can get you a link. Um, Gabe, do you hear? Yeah. Um, he's got specific links where if you buy it, he gets some money. So he'll uh, he'll throw one in the chat. I don't know how much I actually... 
Well, better than nothing. No, I mean, I don't know. Oh, really? I guess, yeah, it has been a while. We'll see. It should still be around, I would think. Okay, so let's put that there. Put that there. Oh, I can't use wooden pencils anymore. It just, for me, it seems like, um... It's weird because I do still use colored pencils and that's like the same thing, but for some reason, and it might be the pencil hardness, like a .2 pencil has pretty hard lead. Um, I can't really use that. Wow, really, Sniggle? That's awesome. I'm super jealous. Oh, really, Serenity? Bummer. She can't get it from the U.S. Amazon. Yeah. That sucks. Yep, yep, so Cactus, I usually tell people draw lightly for 80% of your piece and then the last 20% go in again and it's almost like inking your previous pencil lines and that's when you go in harder. If you're somebody who immediately starts drawing really heavy, take this to heart and try really lightly sketching where you think things should be and when you know where they should be darken those lines in and then you can play with line width and stuff and that can be kind of fun oh that's good Alice that's good you know if you really enjoy that you might be a graphic or a graphite artist if you just like working with pencils you ever thought about that that's good serenity Wow, Snaggle, super jelly over here. I would love to be unplugged for that long. That sounds awesome. You been doing your fighting thing? I think I want to do this. Because it is a lot easier to erase pencil lines when they're super light. With, oh, your watercolor? Well, you know, you can have hybrid pieces that are pencil and watercolor. You just got to get hard enough lead if you want graphite. Um, but what? Um, but you can use colored pencils too. So maybe, Alice, if you ever want to transition over to colored pencils or something, um, start with just using one colored pencil, like a dark color colored pencil, and start replacing your graphite with that, and then you can add in other colored pencil colors eventually. But I find a lot of people get very overwhelmed quickly with colored pencils, because they go into it and they're like, oh, and they use all the colors. And then they're just like, nope, nope, and then they leave it. So if you want to make that transition, be like, uh, you know, a little bit more modest with it, I guess. Because, like, for me, I started with the brown pencil, and I just like using the brown pencil. <laughs> Honestly, I just stayed with it, and a lot of my pieces get, are just brown. I love it. I didn't want other colors. So, one of my problems is I always try to do too many colors. I try to, whenever I go to watercolor, my biggest mistake is I try to do a lot of colors. And I always end up disliking it. And I've tried for so long that I'm like, I really just kind of enjoy monochromatic and sepia tones and I don't like really colorful things. You know, I enjoy flats and rendering done with ink. I don't really like tons of colors and it's one of those things where it's like everybody else realized that before you and I feel like everybody else knew that before me so I find that funny oh I see well uh, 
Honestly, Alice, that's what Gabe uses. Gabe likes the violet. Um, he uses blue, violet, red, and sometimes the darker pink. Um, and he does line work with that. So, I mean, depending on what you want to do. You know, this is probably enough to go on. And I'm probably going to just... What I'll do is I'm going to make a basic... Uh, wheat stock here and I'll probably just do that a bunch in the background save myself time but I do have to do little um, drawings of these guys now that I have a couple to shoot for here so let's do that um, so it's a, it's a walking one so these were when I was trying to figure it out I don't know why it's still blurry. Um, do you have a personal art goal you'd like to achieve either for this year or next year? Not this year. <laughs> I did. Each year I've had probably the same three goals and I wasn't used to freelance yet. So my goals were pretty unobtainable just because I wasn't set in a schedule yet. So I wasn't even able to plan them into a schedule because I didn't have a schedule and honestly it sounds really stupid but the whole reason my my freelance mindset and everything was cattywampus was because I didn't have the right desk <laughs> I know that sounds like a total excuse it sounds like bullshit it sounds crazy but I'm telling you because I was thinking I was like okay something's wrong with how I'm working and I can't figure out what it is. Is it me? Is it my environment? Is it my surroundings? I think half of it was living in a house with too many people. That is very against my grain. I can't live with too many other people. Honestly, it comes down to one. I can live with one other person. But, so that was a problem. I got rid of that problem. Now I'm with Gabe and it's good. So it increased a bit, but then um, I was like, something's still not clicking. So I had to think more of what's when have I worked my best, right? And what were the circumstances during that time regarding my mindset, regarding everything in my life? What can I take from them, from then to now? And I realized every time in my life I was super artistically inclined and super in my zone was remembering this warmth of being in a cozy desk. And my desk at the time uh, was a huge drafting table, totally white, totally black and white, like the whole everything. My computer was really far away. I was really exposed, right? There's no coziness to it at all. Um, and I realized I had the same hutch style desk in every one of those situations back to when I was 12, okay? Like when I was first coming into my artistic everything, I had this type of desk. And once once I realized that, um, I was like, oh my god, this is a duh. You know, it is my environment. I'm not comfortable. You know, and your, your environment can be made up of so many things. The people, the lighting, the things you're drawing on, like how you're sitting, right? So now that I'm in a very comfortable, very inspiring space, I'm happy where I live. Um, I have, a, like right now, all the windows in our house are open. We have giant doors with tons of light coming in. Like this is bouncing off everything behind me. That's why this ambience is nuts. Um, but I have kind of the perfect situation now and it took this long to get here. So the goals that I have had for the past couple years, I can finally see myself working them in next year. And not only that, now that I've got this Patreon thing kind of working, I guess, to an extent, um, I'd like to add a tier to that for me working on my stories. And I want to be able to, every night, take some time to actually set aside to work on my stories. So I can actually be like, okay, deadline for this book is this month. Deadline for that book is that month. I can't do that right now with how many commissions I've got. I've got to do 20 this month still, and I'm a month behind. 
So it's crazy right now. And I have a bunch of Christmas commissions I have to get done. So I don't even have a prayer this year. But next year, I want to do my Raspberry Mouse story. I want to do Hazel because people are still, people remember Hazel from a year ago, my Journey June story. So I want to get that out. Um, and I would like to start down the line of the stories that I have maintained and kept and have grown with me that, you know, I'm not, they're not big stories or anything, but they are stories that I still want to make. So factoring those in though has been a thing to say the least. So just remember that sometimes you can't work on stuff appropriately because of things outside your control or outside yourself. And I'm one of those people to always just go straight to myself and be like, what am I doing wrong? Something in me is malfunctioning. And for the longest time I thought that, and then, you know, I was like, maybe it's not me. Maybe it's outside of me. And once I got to that point, it was like, oh, yeah, duh. Uh, I was being stupid. So. Oh, good job, Snaggle. Thank you. Yeah, I'm going to have to, Alice. Um, it's it's going to be hard. And I mean, if you're still paying, I forget if you pulled out or not, but if you're still paying by then, we can break it up and do a bunch of little commissions. We can do whatever you want. Like, please keep track of how much you're extra you're paying outside of the, the Guardian because that's going to tell me how much I can do for you. Because by that point, I could just give you a bunch of books to do a couple commissions. Next year should be better. Um, like I said about this year, I'm doing a lot less cons. So the cons I actually do, that's kind of my bread and butter for a few months, you know. So you're only on the Guardian tier? All right. Awesome. Just keep track of how much you did give me somewhere. Post a note. I don't know. Um, or email it to me and just have the number and we'll have it on, you know, because it's hard for me to look through. Patreon's cool and everything, but how they keep track of everyone's money is weird because I'd have to see how many, I'd have to look at the number you've paid completely. I'd have to look at uh, how many months you've been on and then I would have to multiply the six for the guardian, then take it out from the overall amount, and that's how much, you know, so it's, it's a thing. <laughs> so yeah, if we can avoid that, that'd be cool. Oh my god. It's scary. Um, oh, we can go with this page, I guess. That's a good standing. So maybe the standing's done. Um, this would be a good one to have to. Maybe I'll do eight instead of six. Maybe a standing side, and then maybe a sitting front. That'll give some good variation. Okay, so this one's not good. Not for what I want. I'm going to bring this down. Maybe you guys can see it better if I bring it down. It's going to be in my face, but I... It's not as important as the art. Whatever. Um, okay, so sliding. So, now that I'm kind of gearing these towards this piece, I can look at the piece and then figure out... What are you doing? Gabe? She's she's barking. Yeah. Get her away from the door. Huh? Get her away from the door? I don't know. <laughs> Poor Bernie. It's like she wants to be inside. She wants to be outside. She wants to be inside. I love these guys. I fell in love with them the first day I drew one, the way I wanted it, and. Uh, there's just like little animate trash bags, kind of, and I kind of dig that. Um, but anyway, I thought that was cute. 
So this one I want to be sliding, but I don't want him to be sliding like that. So if it's going like that. And it's funny, once you actually design a character to have certain like attributes about them, getting them on uh, on model again is kind of difficult. So like he's not on model and it has to do with his legs. So I can't use him. Um, this one is, he's got a little bit of a big hip here. But I would probably push him out a little bit more there. And then he's on model. So, as you can see on these other ones, this is when I was figuring it out. So I was like, do I want a pear-shaped guy? Do I want a little kernel-looking guy? Do I want a wide guy? Do I want a tall guy? Playing with shapes, and I was like, oh, I could do a couple different layers. Do I want to add in the hair that, you know, wheat has? Do I want the fur at the bottom? I was like, maybe the hair would be cute. And then I thought about, you know, the braiding that wheat has. I was like, I want to include that. But across the face feels kind of weird. So then I pushed it to the side. And then this one was when I figured out I could actually have his legs come off where the wheat actually, you know, split. So I was like, oh, that's fine. And then it came together that he kind of has this head that's similar to almost a knight's helmet but it's kind of the reverse. So it's almost like he's coming out of a knight's helmet and then the the hair or feathers that would, the plume that would come out of that is kind of the top. So it's this weird backwards thing. And this one, I was like, should I give him hands? And I was like, no, no, immediately I was like, no. It didn't work right with him. And I kind of liked the, uh, I liked the vulnerability he had just with legs because that adds a lot of challenges for him similar to humans if you're missing some limbs things are harder but they have the added um thing that they're you know they're magical so for these guys they actually run up the side of stocks so like here this this was like what tipped me off to be oh these are like ghibli something about this made me think of um like ponyo i think when she runs it reminded me of that i heard that noise in my head and i was like oh they can just run up wheat right why not they're magical why why can't they like how do they get to all the places they need to be quickly so i've got them where they can run up vertically because i mean they're magical anyway it's weird to think Something can be somewhat magical in some areas and not in others. Once I realized that, I was like, oh, I'm unhinged now. I can do whatever the hell I want. Bye, cactus! The Wheat Wheeler. It's your IP, but I'm going to tell you how many you can keep next start. Oh, I think that'd be wonderful. See, that's fan art out of love. I love that. That's beautiful. See, and when you think of it that way... Alice, like, think if you had done a Wheat Willer and then sold it. Doesn't that feel weird? Doesn't that feel different? Mmm. Oh, I hate that. But yeah, doing that, oh god, I think that'd be so cute. I'd love to see what, how you draw a Wheat Willer. Oh my god. That'd be so cute. If you need reference, um, if you go to... I think they're still on my Instagram. I think I did it. Oh, I didn't. Okay. Hold on. Maybe it's still up. It's not. Okay, just message me on um, Instagram and I'll send you a picture you can use for reference. Or just look at this past broadcast and see them at the bottom. That might work too. No, I think that's wonderful. As long as you don't sell it, I'm cool with it. You know that. I think that's wonderful. Hi, Moltar! How are you? weird bird oh see and that's kind of cool when people like kind of see different things in them and i'm like huh i could see that i mean because kiwis don't have you know wings so i could totally see that let's 
Nancy. Butters is gone somewhere. I also thought about adding mouths, and I'm like, no, no. I feel like I get a lot th through just by doing uh, body language and eyes, honestly, a lot of the time. Also, this is too big for what I'm doing. Um, let's see. So this is sliding. So I got sliding done. Sitting, we've got sitting. Sleeping, I have one sleeping, but I don't know if I like it. Eh, maybe I did. I can't remember how old it was. Also, this is my Patreon sketchbook. So, I like having different sketchbooks for different reasons. It helps me focus, and not only that, but since I draw so much, it helps me find past ones. So this one, Patreon, right? So everything I do for my Patreon has been in here, like the bunny that's got the thistle guy, all the drawings that I do on the actual, um, the scroll I have in here. These were the woolly bear, uh, stickers, so these are this big. <laughs> this always makes people like, what? So they're this big, and then I scanned them in and I colored them and now they're this big. So. This guy turned into that guy. Uh, this one turned into this one. They don't have the white around them anymore. I fixed that. Uh, this is that guy. So, uh, that's that one. See, and this is what I mean. Sometimes I just don't do thumbnails. Like, all these on this page, I used. Like, I don't, at this point, in freelance, like I said, you don't really have time to screw around or make mistakes, so, I've used all these. Uh, these ones I had to learn a little bit more, but... Um, and then for the spur, for those that had the spur, I love this shot. I think it's so fun. I'm probably so lame for that, but I love it. I think it's so good. But, so the ones I like, I circle, and then I put them into the computer and I do the stuff. But this is on the scroll too. Um, but yeah, and the, the woolly bear pen. Also, for those of you who, uh, do get these, you have usually the plastic bags. We've been upgraded, y'all! You're gonna get steel bags now. Um, so along with the added, hey, you can get magnets instead of pins, um, the pins have been upgraded, so it's good. Ooh, really? Where, Snaggle? In Discord or on your Instagram? Oh, thank you, Serenity. I appreciate that. The Wheat Leaf Cradle? Where? Did I do it already? Is that what you said you saw? Wheat Leaf Cradle. Discord. Okay, I'll check. Oh, yeah, yeah. You got it, Alice. So, I even feel like this one's not on model anymore either. I feel like his feet would be up here now and not out there. Originally, I had it down here. So, after you kind of nail down your character design, you figure out what their body can and can't do. And I really don't think his leg would have been down there. Knowing what I know about him now, I think he'd just put them forward, but, because he would get stuck. <laughs> like, he could do that, but he would get ultimately stuck, and he has no arms, he would not be able to get out of there, he would die. He would probably die. <laughs> oh, on Discord, okay. I will look, Sniggle, I will look. Oh, cool. Sniggle, are you orange or black? You the black one? Oh my god, orange guy is awesome. I love the mask. 
I have a story with characters like that. You're the pumpkin man! Oh, cool! That is you! Oh, Sniggle, those are awesome. This is great. That mask is awesome. You did a really good job on that. You know, this is really cool now that I've got a visual to put to it. Thank you for sharing those. Because really, that is so cool. One of those would make a really good cover photo on Facebook. Just saying. <laughs> no, it doesn't look like it was easy. Yeah, it looks hot. I'm surprised they have that in the summer. Do they have it all year long? Because I would think the fall would be awesome. And it'd be cool to do it in winter, too, because then you get, like, winter fights. Oh, man. That could be neat. <sighs> Alright, so I've got sleeping. I've got magicking. Running. I do have the running one, but do I want a different running one? Requires a lot of thought. Um, sitting front, standing front. You know, I might have enough of these to actually start inking them. So I'm gonna take a picture of this new one. This is seriously how I do a lot of my stuff. I will just take pictures with my phone, and if if I'm gonna just be recreating it anyway. A lot of the time, I won't even, like, properly scan it. I'll just take a picture of it. Um, and then I'll let my phone upload it to the cloud. And then I'll be good to go. So. This is when Bruni was looking like a walrus. Because she a walrus baby. She my walrus baby. Okay. So I'm going to let that upload. And you only draw on one side of the paper. Uh, yeah, because I don't want it to smudge. A lot of the time I use really soft lead. So because I use soft lead, I can just like, you know, if you look at this. Uh, so, I mean, if I was using harder lead, I'd probably use both sides. But it also helps me keep track. <laughs> because since I'm a little dumb sometimes, um, girl. Uh, if I know I would look through a sketchbook and be like, where's this one drawing? I can't find this drawing. And if I was drawing on the backs of stuff, I'd probably never look, to be completely honest. So, and since it's just like a sketch, sketchbook, I'm totally, you know, inside for me. Well, I don't like when you can see the drawing on the other side either. It completely screws me up. One of my things... The bad things I used to do, and I feel like when everybody starts drawing, they have this one thing that they always do. My thing, there are two, actually, I must say both. Um, one was I couldn't draw on a piece of paper that showed lines from something else. And this is why I, when I met Gabe and he's drawing on graph paper, I lost my shit. I was like, how can you do this? This is like my brain can't, there's too many constraints having a graph. You know, like it, for some people it helps. For me, it just hindered me. It was like, I can't draw on this. There's stuff there already. I can't do it. So I used to crumple up paper that was already like, I'm like, it's got uh, erased lines that are still there. I can't unsee that and I can't draw around it and I'd get rid of it. Eventually I learned to draw lighter. And that's why I say to the light, draw light first. And then go over it again hard later. What was that? Oh. Um, oh, sorry guys, that's loud. The other thing was... Let's see, it was drawing on the paper. Chancho, I can't think! Uh, 
I think the other thing is drawing on the other no. side of the paper. Like, if I could see it on the other side, I was like, no, I can't do that. I swear to God, there's something else, though. It was the pencil thing. Man, I forgot. Oh, Chancho's? Yeah, he's funny. They both have hilarious, like, barks. It's ridiculous. Um, oh, everybody's coming in right now. Hold on. What was the other thing, though? It was, like, eraser lines and being able to see something on the back side? Is it just those two things? That seems stupid. Is that really what it was? It must have been. It must have been. Um... Yeah, Chancho is a boy. Butters is the girl. Hi! Hi! You wanna come here? Oh, she's such a lover. It's great palette. Yeah! Hi, Ryan! How you doing? Here's Butters. <laughs> you floopy? You wanna look at the camera? You sweetie? Hi! Hi! You being good? Hmm? Just like, why are you holding me that, like this? You good? Mm. Oh. <laughs> She's still got that blind eye that looks like the moon. It's a full moon tonight, Butters. Do you know? You look very confused. Oh, honey. Oh. And she always, like, throws her head against me. She's, she's a lover. Oh. Oh, what are we doing? You want to get down? Okay. Oh. Nightshade! <laughs> Notification. 24! Nightshade, you just hit two years. That's crazy. I can't believe that. Like, September? I wouldn't have thought you subbed to me in September. That's insane. Oh my god. I don't know where Chancho went, either. Chancho! You wanna come here? You wanna come here? Come here. You wanna see people? Oh, my little Buddha bear. Oh, he's so much heavier, but he's smaller. I don't know how. He looks so mad. Look at his eyebrows. It's like he's wearing makeup to enhance it. You got contouring? Huh? Oh, crumbles. Oh, he's, he's so chill, though. He's one of those dogs you can do anything to, and he just, like... It's like, whatever. He's a little bear, though. He's got a big belly. That's why I call him my Buddha bear. But he just looks so pissed off. And then he's got an underbite that he shows sometimes. And it's really funny. He's a little good, good boy, though. He has lady hair. He feels like a lady, but... Oh my god, how are you so heavy? He feels twice as heavy as Butters. It's insane. <sighs> Time does fly. I will be right back. I have to go to the bathroom. I'll be right back. Um, yeah.
hello. Okay, so I'm gonna be bringing these over into the computer, so we won't have this anymore. Um, dog costume Halloween pictures? Ooh, I don't know. I don't know if we'll have time for it. I gotta be honest though, I saw, is it at Meyer? I forget if I was at Meyer or Joanne, but they had like a unicorn costume and I was like, oh my god, Butters would look so cool as a unicorn. But, well thanks for the host, Ryan. I appreciate that. He does have ears like Yoda. Uh, I actually say like when he gets really submissive, his ears go down. And I always say that's when he starts airplaning, but... No, what is it, Nightshade? Oh no. What is it? What is September's? I don't even see it. Where do you... Oh wait, is it in the special area? I don't even have it. I don't even know. <laughs> Water. Butters, you want to come up? You want to come up? Of course you do. Alright, I'm going to back this up so she can come up. Come on. She loves sitting on my lap. So I let her whenever she wants, basically. It's under the donate beds. Oh! I can't cheer in my own channel, Nightshade, so I came and see it. I click it and it just has nothing except you cannot cheer in your own channel. I'm like, okay. Oh, thank you, Paladin. They are pretty rescues, I gotta be honest. And I love all the things that are wrong with Butters, except her breath. She's breathing right now and it's disgusting. Like, she has the worst breath I've ever smelled on a dog. <sighs> like, it's gag-worthy, but I love her to death, and I would never not get near her because of it, but holy hell, it is something else, let me tell ya. Okay. <sighs> I'm switching over to digital here, so. We saw part of the other stuff. Let's see the rest. Here's my really ugly, old Cintiq. Don't be jealous, it's from 2008. <laughs> 2008, I kid you not. Tancho, why are you freaking out, honey? Why are you boofting? Stop boofting. Tancho, shush, it's okay. Let me send this to my second desktop, and then we'll be good. Alright. There we go. I'll just put this camera back. Sometimes when it's in my face, I get really weirded out. Alright. Alright. It'd be worse if she farted. She does have old lady farts. It's kind of funny, but... She doesn't fart that much. Surprisingly, neither does Bruni. And I feel bad because everybody's always like, oh, your bulldog must fart all the time. I'm like, she really doesn't. My old bulldog did, my last one, yeah. But this one, meh. Sorry, Butters. She hates it when my hair tickles her, her ear. All right, Snuggle, you take care. I'll turn it down for the moment because Chon keeps barking. You gotta pick him up or he's gonna keep doing it. Like, I actually think he feels bad if he barks in your ear. Like, he knows. Alright. Later skaters, catch you on the flippity flop. Word. Take care, home slice. Is that better? It's better. Alright. So 
For the sitting one, I think I'm just gonna use the one at the bottom. What are the other ones? Was that Bruni? No, that was still him. Um, magicking. Let's do the magicking. That one could be cool. I'm into saying magicking instead of casting right now. Don't know why. How big was the other one? <laughs> Chancho does what I call the aftershocks. Like if he gets into an uproar of barking, he will uh, keep barking. Even when it's gone. It's like PTSD for dogs. <laughs> like he will keep barking. 2048, 2048, 300. Butters, you're gonna get too warm there and you know it. So right now I'm just gonna bring all the sketches that I want to ink and color into this one document so I've got them in the same place. work the way I think it will. So maybe I'll have to update that in a minute. Goodness, chancho. Okay, so we have running. Chancho? Oh, Chacho. Chacho! No Buffton! You... Oh my god. I'm gonna have to mute this. Maybe he needs a walk. <laughs> Just so we can get it out. No. All right, I need to open my other one. Standing side. So for those that don't know what I'm doing right now, um, I'm actually doing a print sticker combo for this month. Um, typically I either do either or, but uh, this month I'm doing what I'm calling a plug and play print. So if you want to take the stickers that I give you and actually put them on the print, like in a spot, so you can place your own little guys, you can totally do that. I thought that was a kind of a fun interactive idea. You can actually do that. So there's that. Standing side. Do I have standing side? So I'm giving a bunch of little versions of these guys kind of just standing around, um, doing different things. I've got a sleeping one too. I gotta get that one out. Um, but that way you can either place them in the print or place them anywhere you want, really. They're just kind of interactive to whatever you want to place them on which personally is my favorite kind of sticker is if it's got like I don't know I've always liked stickers that feel like they can interact with things so if they're missing like a chunk of them because you know they intend for you 
to put it near something where it looks like it's peeking out maybe from behind something. I dig that. I think that's cool. I think that's thinking on another level, and I appreciate that. Right now I'm trying to find another one of the sketches. Here it is. He's sliding down a leaf. I just had to go find it and download it. And the snoring is Bruni. She sounds like a grandpa. I don't know if you guys can hear that or not. Let's go to the next thing. Like I said, if you're just doing something like this, where you're just going to end up inking and coloring them anyway, I just take a picture of my phone. Because why not? It doesn't matter. Okay. So one, two, three, four, five. Five so far. I should have one, two, three, four, five, six. Seven of them. Is anybody doing anything fun tonight or the weekend? I keep forgetting it's Friday. Have I changed my hair color? No. Uh, but the lighting is probably different. Awesome. All right, Alice. Enjoy dinner, okay? Oh, that makes sense, Serenity. Yeah, my phone's decent enough. I mean, you can see how pixelated this is, but it's enough for me to just kind of know where things are. It look red. Whoa. No. This is my original color. It's got probably some red undertones, but, um, I don't know. A few years ago, I went through the whole different color hair phase and whatever, but a couple years ago, I'm just like, I'm gonna just grow it out again and just do my natural color and I love it honestly I love it I don't think I'm ever gonna dye my hair again just because I really like this length and I really want it even longer but um, hairdressers have always told me that people look best in the color they were born in and I agree with that I think that's that's very wise um, I'm sorry Save it. Colors. Um, let's do Wheat Willer poses. Oh, butters. I'm sorry. My hair keeps touching her ears. Down here, face. Yeah, it's just I got to a point where I realized. I was trying to project something with saying with my hair being a different color. I felt like I was trying too hard. I wanted people to know I was interesting or crazy at a first glance. And then I, once I got older, I figured out I don't care what people know. And if they want to get to know me and they find out I'm an interesting person, cool. But I don't have to say that through how I look. And I think that's kind of an adult older person thing where you're not trying to tell people who you are without telling them verbally you know I feel like when I was younger I was and I mean I feel like a lot of people probably do this too with wearing pop culture things and stuff I feel like they do it to be like hey I like this thing and you know I'm into this stuff and it's cool but I think it's too much when personally this is this is just what I think, this is my opinion, but I hate seeing someone that's completely decked out in fandoms. It doesn't tell me anything. Like, they think it tells people something, but I have no idea who that person is. Even if they've got, you know, different fandoms, just because you like the fandom, it doesn't tell people who you are. So, I don't know, I would rather see somebody 
decked out in cool patterns they like or solids or something like I don't know I get so much more through simple looks but that's part of my art style too so I would say that <laughs> oh Buggles how are you oh really well two ways you can watch them um, twitch saves them for two weeks after I've done them and then I forward them to my YouTube so ever since I started basically doing streams they're all on YouTube so if you want to see me being embarrassing when I first started go for it <laughs> they're all there um, but yeah if you ever miss one this one the beginning of it was pretty good it was about um, how to part with your art so I had talked to somebody recently who I really wanted one of their originals and I was like well you know I'd pay up to 200 for this you know are you willing to part with it and all that it's just nice to ask you hope they're like yeah sure whatever but he wasn't and he's a professional and it it blew my mind that he had been through so many different jobs and so many things and after what we talked about at the beginning of the stream after for those of you who are still here from the beginning isn't that weird like he's been through a lot of jobs professional jobs he's fantastic but he didn't want to give it up and I was like well maybe it's for a job but as far as I know it's not so I was very confused um, how early are they for you Buggles? So Serenity, do you do your hair for you, or do you do it, you think, as a means to supplement who you are to other people? What do you think you do your hair for? I'm interested. Oh, it's a nine? Okay. Yeah, I wouldn't be up for that either, Buggles, I'll be honest. Um, Alright, let's bring these over. I should be able to open up that file. Come on. What? Was oh, it because it doesn't say PSD? Are you really going to get on my case for this? Photoshop. What are you doing? That's good. I dig it, Serenity. I dig it. I thought mine was for me too, but I knew what I was doing eventually, and I was like, oh, I shouldn't do that. Uh... Do you guys have that thing where if you save a file, you totally blank out on where you put it? I'm that guy. I also think I always knew that I really liked my original hair color. It's just I thought other people thought it was boring. And I thought I wanted to be more interesting when really I was very interesting. It's just one of those things where, you know, low self esteem or whatever. Um, even though I was pretty confident, I, I had some doubts. Paladin, you still here? How's streaming been, buddy? Oh, cool, Buggles. That's cute. Yeah, see? I feel the same way, Paladin. Like, I really feel like once I start going gray, because I kind of, I've started loosely, but it hasn't, like, fully taken over. But I feel like once it does, I'm going to totally love that. And what was neat was, if you guys ask your hairdresser, um, if you've got enough of your original hair color coming through, um, they can usually tell you if you're going to be like a white hair or a dark gray hair or a medium gray. I'm going to apparently be the dark gray hair, which I would have been sad about if you told me that in my 20s, but now I'm like, cool, I can deal with dark gray. 
you know? I think it'd be, I don't know, I'm just gonna embrace it because I think it's cool. I dig it. Butters, do you need to get down? You're really warm. Are you overheating? Oh, see, I don't like that. You almost gave up two months ago. Why? Gabe and I were feeling like that lately too, actually, because not only has Twitch had a bunch of controversy, but um, it really feels like it's, especially for creatives like all of us, um, it just doesn't feel like people care to be here really. Um, it's really sad we don't have like an art streaming service that's big that's not filled with porn. Because there's Picardo, every time I'm like, I wish we had an art streaming service, people are like, duh, Picardo, I'm like, Duh, it's full of porn. No. <laughs> you know, and it, I feel like it's harder and more hidden. It's less mainstream than Twitch is. So it kind of sucks, you know. That's true, Serenity. I feel you. So there's this guy. See how quickly that inking is done? Like, that's already done. Basically. Let me put in two more things. Gabe, when did you want to get food? Huh? Are you hungry? No. Okay. Well, we can wait until you are. Outside, I guess. Well, I guess if we shut the doors. <laughs> Are the girls out? It's okay. John Joe. Maybe if I put him on my lap. What do you think? Hey, good job, Serenity. How'd it go? How'd you give me all your feelings about it? Did you like it? Hate it? Yeah, maybe he's okay. If he starts wailing, I'll put him up here. inside. What's your cat's name, Paladin? It's busy Friday, I guess. Is that Bruni? Is she leaning on something? It sounds like a vibrating phone. Ruth! Oh, Ruth is a great name for a cat. I love that. How old is she? Is she an older lady? Paladin said, hey there, Gabe, how's you? Hello, I'm doing well. 
He says he's doing well. 14, so she is an older lady. Have you had her all her life? Ruth is a good old lady name, though. It's like one of those names where it's like you're born into being a little bit older, it feels like. Like, I always wonder about those parents that name their kids, like, uh... Oh, there are some names that are just, like, guy names, like Steve. Like, it feels weird to have a two, three-year-old named Steve. Or Carl. Or Tom. <laughs> you know? Like, maybe IT guy names or something? I don't know. Oh, she's a rescue kitty. Aww. 18 months, though, so she's always been Ruth. She's finally kind of grown into her old ladiness. I think that's cute. Do you smell something funky, like gas? That smell always freaks me out. When does Link's Awakening come out? What? Link's Awakening come out? to play that and I don't know how I'm gonna do that maybe just before bed like 20 minutes every night <laughs> there's no way she's just on the floor she has to be like laying on a toy nope. shut up really Oh, Pippa! Oh, that's sweet. I like Pippa, though, too. You know, that's fair. As a mythology, the Bible's pretty dope. I gotta say. It's, it's a really good hero's story that I think a lot of people can relate to. Um... Some of the other religions, it's a little harder to follow their, uh, what are those called? Oh my god, why am I blanking on this? Tales that tell you something. Mm. They're meant for you to learn. Not fables. Oh my god. Parables? No. I don't think I'm going to think of it. Oh, it's going to drive me nuts. <sighs> I think you guys get what I'm saying, though. <laughs> like, every religion, like, kind of the purpose of religion is to, um have these stories of characters that are, you know, having moral dilemmas so that you yourself are able to relate them to your life and figure out your problems. Oh, what is the word? I'm looking it up.
God, everything I'm looking at is like a hair away from the word. Metaphor, oh. allegory, no. <laughs> this is so dumb. It's like lessons, but... Gabe, do you know what I'm talking about? I don't know. Here we go, source.com, help me out. You know what I'm talking about though, right? Mm -hmm. Like the word? <laughs> you guys, why is this happening to us so many times today? Uh, lecture, assignment, teaching, a teaching, a helpful example, a... I thought it started with an L, an R. No. Stories with lessons. Is this fun to watch me kind of struggle bus through this? Or is this frustrating? Because if it's frustrating, I'll stop. But this is how my life is. <laughs> oh my god. I feel bad because I found a site where this person is having the same problem I am. They just call them short moral stories and they keep saying short moral stories but the word I'm thinking of is the word that means short moral stories. <laughs> ah. Oh my god. Oh my god. I thought they did start with a P or an R. I don't think it's parable. I know you said that, Serenity, but maybe it is. I feel like I would have been like, yeah! Folk tales that teach. It's called a How about Life lessons through fables. It's weird because I feel like it's strictly related to religion, though. Like religious stories. I feel like it's a specific word for those. Oh yeah. I got nothing. Maybe I'll think of it later. Was it parable? <laughs> Chancho.
It's like if a dog had Tourette's. I feel like that's him. None of those. You know what? Maybe we should just say it was allegory. Maybe you're right, Serenity. I just, oh my god. Myth. Uh, no. <laughs> no, not myth. Not that dumb. I use myth on a daily basis, no. But it's what a myth is called. Like, it's like what you would refer to, like, any Bible story or any religious text story that has, it's a, uh, where it teaches a life lesson through example of someone else's. I just, I, I swear to God it started with a P, but, no. No. <laughs> See, we said that, too. I feel like all the fables tell us a couple lessons. Yeah, but you wouldn't call an excerpt from the Bible a fable. Well, I would, but other people wouldn't. It's, it's got its own word for it. Uh. You guys will see me post on my Insta story at like 1 a.m. and it'll just be a word in bold and people will be like, what? <laughs> and like Serenity, you'll be like, oh! It's, it's not a euphemism. Do you feel my pain through my face? <laughs> It's a... Nope. I mean, we talked about it being an allegory, but it, I remember it starting with a P. I gotta give up. I gotta give up because I'm. I'm gonna. I'm gonna get mad. <laughs> gospel? No. I don't know. No. It's not a sermon. It's not a gospel. It's not an excerpt. It's not. It's not any of those type of things. Because it's not like. It's not Bible specific. It could be any religious text, but it's more religious based than, say, myth based. Like. What is it called? You guys, I just dropped it. You got me back up into it. Oh my god. Is it parable? Yeah, Kristen, I think you're right. I think it must be parable, because I swear god it's a P word. And it sounded like principle in my head. So it's gotta be parable. I think you're right. You and Serenity. Serenity, I think you said it too. I don't know why I glazed over it. So yeah. Parables. Why were we talking about this? <laughs> like, I don't even remember now. Oh. I don't know. Well, 
thanks for repeating it because I think it might have just been where I was at up here. It's got to be a parable. It's starting to feel more right the more I think about it. So yeah, let's go parable. Parable or bust. <laughs> but yeah, that's not even the worst part. The worst part. Remember, uh, I told you I couldn't draw on like graphs. This counts. So whenever I actually turn down the opacity on something, I need to put white behind it so I don't see all the squares. It's one of those things like, do you know why you do this? Here's the reason. Oh, that sounds like popcorn now. Where's that? Less. <laughs> oh man, I'm ready for dinner whenever you are, if you want to go grab it. It's up to you though, if you're busy, don't worry about it. Yeah, right? Oh, serenity drives me crazy. And it's like, if I'm having a more than slow day too, it's even worse. Like, I struggle bus through the whole day. That was a pretty good line. Let's see if I can clean it up a bit more. And are you a troll? No, it's okay. I just gotta ask. Gotta make sure. In that case, welcome. <laughs> Sorry you came in when I was like super frustrated. I couldn't even think of this. Yeah, it's parable. I'm calling it. It's parable. You guys are right. I just can't remember why we were trying to even do this now. Paladin had said something, and I think we were talking about his cat's name. He was talking about the fact her name is Ruth because he likes the story of the Bible about Ruth, but he's not religious. And then I said, as a myth, like Christianity is pretty cool, but not as like an actual system. And then I was talking about the stories in them, or... And then that's where I got fucked up. <laughs> I couldn't think of what the stories were called. They are parables. Bless. <laughs> yeah! You should be proud! It's, it's little things that get me going. Some things I just... I brush them off, but no. Not that one. Usually if it's a word, I will get stuck on it for hours. Just ask Gabe. If I can't think of a word, it drives me up the wall. I think there's one word I couldn't think of for like an entire night and I almost died. <laughs> Would you say this is accurate? All the time. No, I get it. I, I just want to make sure you weren't a troll. I appreciate your input. You are valued. <laughs> oh, Paladin! <laughs> oh, 
Oh, I love you. See, I, okay, I think the best thing about streams is inside jokes. Paladin, would you say as a streamer, like, that's why regulars and, you know, your normal crew are the best because you say something about inside jokes and I feel like streaming just thrives off just inside jokes. Like, that's what they're about, really. This one doesn't feel as good as the other ones. Something about this form is off. There we go. That's better. I feel like this leg needs to be up higher too. This is messed up. Oh, and there I go. I'm using Photoshop things in here. Sometimes that drives me crazy too. Honestly, a lot of the shortcuts, luckily, are Photoshop ones, which I was really happy about, but some things, like, uh, this eyedropper, I sometimes accidentally go into this and I don't mean to, and then I'll eyedrop a different color and then it starts this whole thing, and I'm like, damn it. Alright, so this one, he's zooming down like a piece of wheat. So I think I'll leave those lines. I have to think about how the stickers are going to print out while I'm doing this, which can be kind of interesting. I figured out how to make stickers not have white outlines <laughs> when I cut them and all that with the Cricut. Um, let's see. Did I already do the sleeping one? No, I didn't do the sleeping one. I should do the same one. Hey, Matt! Yeah! Oh, that's so sweet of you to ask! I did! Um, I made up four new outfits using leggings and finding longer than normal shirts. Um, that were like medieval blouses. So then I used my usual like belts and uh, vests and I did it that way. Honestly, no one was there to take pictures of me, which is kind of weird, but um, somebody did at the con. At least two people took pictures of me, but I... It's weird. You get people who take pictures of you at conventions and they kind of just walk away forever and you're like, wow, all right. Because I'm more of a pants chick anyway, and the fact that I've been wearing dresses for so long, like, for this persona, I don't know, I always felt it was a little wrong. Uh, so, like, the fact I'm wearing this dress here, it's really cute. Like, I like it, but maybe it's more Cloverkin than me, but I don't know. Because I like pants. I don't know. Dresses just get in the way. In the way! <laughs> I'd like to think I am. I think you got me pretty well figured out. I'm a professional problem solver, aka a woman. <laughs> or a lot of the time I feel like that's what we are. Um, all right, come on sleeper, sleepy sleep. They are faster to draw in some cases. I mean, if you think about it though, pants are just like drawing someone naked anyway, and if you're drawing them naked anyway, you know. Maybe you're already done. Especially if they're leggings. Let's be honest. Let's go back over to clip. 
it's just I like the aesthetic for the character, but in being her, it was kind of a pain in the ass. Especially since it added, I kid you not, like ten pounds to the to the luggage. Gabe can even attest to that. Like, didn't the dresses add like a ton? It was stupid. It was the skirts, man. The skirts are huge. I don't know how people who do actual legitimate Victorian wear and stuff take that stuff with them. Got me. Well, that's good. No, the ones that I did wear here, I guess I can figure out how to show this to you. Um, they are very similar to this outfit. I sent this to Gabe, but it's not in a probe. So if you can see, that one had... Oh, let me lower the... you see that better? So there's, you know, I'm wearing boots, I got leggings, I got a shirt that's lower than my butt. I just didn't want my butt hanging out, you know? So I got some shirts that went below my butt, and then that one... I, it's funny, a lot of the stuff is from Target. I just was able to make it work. <laughs> Thank you! It works out a lot better. And honestly, behind the booth, it makes maneuvering behind the booth so much better. You would not believe how much that dress got in the way. Because all that people saw, really, other than me walking around the convention or walking back to the hotel, was just the top part. So as long as I nail the top part, who cares, right, about the bottom? So, anyway. Plus, like I said, it's a lot more comfy, especially since the last con I went to was in Georgia. And it was hot. Very hot. So now the next con I have to go to is in... It's the last con I'm going to this year, and it's in December. And I'm actually wondering if I should wear the dresses, but I'm thinking not. Just because I really do like this new pants thing. The problem is with the pants, I can't get too fat. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know whether I want to wear the dresses or not. Oh, bye, Matt. Hey, Eliza. Where have you been? Where are the pants? Yeah, I think you're right. Pants. I mean, Gabe thinks it's a lot more me, too. And I respect Gabe. Most of the time. So how's your Friday the 13th going? Mine are usually pretty lucky. This one's been not so special either way, but I usually don't have a unlucky Friday the 13th. You being, you being tired? Are you sleeping? Oh, my sweet tired moo moo. Oh, your breath is almost as bad as butter's right now. You got pink shoes? Damn! You gonna put up a picture of them shoes? <sighs> you done work good in the mornings? I feel you. I keep forgetting this is your morning, isn't it? Well, this is in Clip Studio. Uh, Clip Studio has a stabilizer, which I highly recommend buying Clip Studio specifically for this feature, because 
Photoshop ain't got shit on this. Like, this is seriously the best... I can't even... Like, Photoshop can't do this. Um, so it's in Clip Studio, it's a line stabilizer, and that can be found right here. I usually have mine set to like 100 or 150, so if the higher you go, the more calculations it has to do. So I guess the max is 100, but yeah, if, you know, it makes it really smooth. Here, I'll show you the difference. So if we just have, let's see, here we go. Okay. So this is with line stabilization to 100. Okay, look how smooth that is. And if we don't have any... <laughs> Do you see the difference? This was $60 for me, this program. I have done so many things with this program that have paid for that $60 over and over and over thanks to this line stabilizer. This is sad. It's so sad. And you know what's even worse? It's worse in Photoshop. If you can imagine this being worse, oh, it is. It's so stupid. So, like, the fact that I can do really nice, clean lines with uh, Clip Studio. So if I put it back up to 100, like, they're very, very clean lines. And I mean, if you're used to inking with your hand and doing parallels and stuff, this is just going to make you more strong. Um, and honestly, I don't think it's a crutch either, because it's just taking what you can already do and amplifying it. So I see nothing wrong with it. But in Photoshop, <laughs> here we go. I'll show you. Hey. Chancho, come here. Sit on my lap. Here. Bring him here. Oh, the butter's got too warm anyway. Turning it off now sometimes. No, actually, I'm not. Um, it might look that way because I'm switching between the eraser and the cursor. But like Photoshop, it's just. <laughs> okay. Are you okay? You gonna lay down? We can't have you barking. The only way to have you not bark is to sit on my lap. Okay? Can you deal with that? Alright. So, like, it's not good. It's just, they have a stabilizer in Photoshop they said they added? No. No, they don't. No. What did you want? Um. Last time, didn't I get like a salad or something? Well, you got it without the stuff. Without the shell? Yeah. Yeah. Um, do that again, and then get me chips and the cheese stuff, and then a pop. If you could. Um, okay. So let's see. Did I already do this one? I feel like I didn't. That sounds right. Ugh, the only bad thing is sometimes Photoshop and Clip Studio don't play nice. And this is why I put it, okay. So I go back and forth through these programs pretty uh, I don't know, common pretty often. I guess. Can I watch it without hearing it? Turning it off. Sounds like you're trolling me now. Do you mean undoing? I don't see what you mean, actually. 
Like I draw and then I draw. I don't know what you mean. Turning it off. The second line. Are you just talking about the cursor going and then the line following? Sometimes I guess it catches up, sometimes it's okay. I mean, because it's calculating the better way to draw the line as I'm drawing it. So that's why it's a learning curve thing too. Like I feel like after you've done this a bit, because for a while I was like, oh my god, I gotta get used to this. Um, what is it, honey? What? You gonna let the people hear you cry? You crying? Why? Why are you sad? You got food. Oh, I don't know. Honestly, I have no idea. Oh, the pink shoes. Girl got the pink shoes. Oh, that could be. Yeah, I might just be moving slower. Oh, Eliza, those are cute. Are they comfy? You done, Chancho? Are you trying to... You want to drink? Yes. <coughs> My bulldog is not happy. Why aren't you happy, bulldog? <coughs> You're cute. Are you mad that Chancho's sitting on my lap? Huh? She's so funny. Weird, I didn't even know you could select that. Why are you crying? Leave it to little tiny ovals to get me stopped up. She might be. Bruni, do you gotta go potty? Sometimes she does this when she has to potty. You gotta go potty? You gotta go poops? Mushy, you gotta go poops? She might have to go poops. You gotta ring the bell, honey. Why don't you ring the bell? You ring the bell for everything else? Go ring the bell. She is bell trained, but sometimes she just, it's usually when she has to poop, she doesn't always ring the bell. It's like she's too lazy to walk over to where she's gonna have to be anyway. Real funny. Thank you, Gabe. Can you go, Papa? Yeah, I know. I switched dogs in my lap, too. Butters was here, but Butters is like a little heater. Like, she gets way too hot really quickly. And I think it's because she has the thickest coat out of all of them. Like, she is like a sheep. It's crazy. Um, so she can't usually stay on my lap too long. And Chancho is really heavy and long. And obviously Bruni is 60 pounds, so... Uh, But Chancho, when he barks, you gotta pick him up, and then he just stops barking. He usually doesn't bark very much, either. <laughs> she might be embarrassed. Yeah, she's been known to get embarrassed. It's pretty cute. Yeah, um, so I used Blender back when I went to college for 3D animation and I ended up going into games doing all that stuff. 
Uh, I liked using 3ds Max because it was the most simple, straightforward program. Maya was way too crazy. Um, for the people that liked scripting, though, they preferred Maya. I didn't. Every, all the UI was hidden and it drove me nuts. Um, Blender, I'm sure it's come a long way, but the last time I used it was probably in 2013, 2015, that area. No. Its UI during that time was horrendous. But I know a lot of people who use it, and I know a lot of people who love it, so I'm guessing it got better. Um, and it's great now, I guess. I haven't heard any complaints from people like <laughs> like there used to be. So. But. I ended up just pirating 3DS Max instead of using Blender because I wanted the program I knew and I wasn't doing any freelance at the time so honestly you're not doing anything wrong pirating it if it's kind of for like educational use and you're figuring stuff out still. Once you start making actual projects with it and earning money then it can be bad but even then it's hard for them to know. Okay. See, that's awesome then. Because it had a lot of potential, but my main problem was the, like, the pipeline of the workflow, and going through the UI was just a pain in the ass. I was like, I don't know where anything is. This is horrible. It was kind of like Maya, but worse? Somehow it was bad. But yeah, if it's better now, that's great. So it was a decent program for sure. Something I haven't heard anything about is Cinema 4D. I feel like that just died. Nobody uses it anymore. I don't know. But 3DS Max was nice just because I could pop in, make a quick model, uh, export it as an OBJ, and just have it ready. That was just. It was nice. For what I used it for. I needed that kind of e easeability, I guess. Did she have to go? Yeah. yeah. Well, Liza, I saw it as they gave us, for us anyway, they gave us three months of 3DS Max, then they pushed us into Maya for like the rest of our schooling. And I feel like they did that so we could choose, you know, because certain animation studios and like, you know, film studios you go into, they use a specific program. Some only use Maya, some only use 3ds Max, some even have proprietary stuff. Um, and I hope at least at this point they're starting to teach kids Unity because you need to know Unity. Yeah, they, um, they, we learned a little bit. Did you really? Yeah. Lucky. Um, well, because we're. Chicago were more, there's more video game companies out here. Yeah, Minnesota didn't have any, but, um, <sighs> what was I saying? But yeah, I feel like they taught us Maya even just so we'd have options. So I did kind of appreciate that. They showed us kind of the breadth of what was out there at the time, which for me it was 2007 ish, 2004 to 2007 when I was in college. And I don't know, like I said, I guess I appreciated that they gave us that kind of a breadth of it, but I don't know. Other than that, I see what you mean. For sure. Well, Maya and 3DS Max are both for animation. They both do the same things. Um, everybody I knew that was crazy for scripting, like they loved coding in Maya, um, they hated coding in Max. So. They were Maya people, and they would go find, you know, studios that liked Maya, but no, I mean, I animated all my stuff in Max. Um, it's pretty cute. I've never seen the movie Next Challenge. Really? That's crazy. I would not have guessed that. Why would they do that? When there are so many better programs, why would they do a whole movie and blender. That's crazy. Weird, Eliza. 
What was your major that they were having you do that? Was it animation or was it 3D model? Like, hmm. Because we had to model texture, light, render, um, rig. Oh, rigging in Maya was awful. I struggled through that harder probably than anything in my life. Rigging in Max? Easy! Oh. Really? That's crazy. I didn't even... I did not see that coming. I'll tell you. I love you too. Do you, want, do you need my card? No. Okay, you guys be good. Since Papa's gone. How you doing, Chancho? Okay. Well, I think Chancho's afraid of heights. I think that's why he doesn't like being picked up or put in laps. He seems to get a little bit worried. Um, okay. Yeah, honestly, I'd use Google SketchUp if I needed to do some quick buildings or cars, anything, honestly, that I needed really quick, because they have a lot of good base models, a lot of good default stuff. Um, but, I mean, the other thing is, you know, if you're an artist in the industry, Macs are kind of the industry standard. So if you're also a person who likes to do 3D, you can't run, or at least maybe they fixed it now, but you could never run Macs or Maya on a Mac. It was always a PC uh, program. So we only had Cinema 4D on Macs once I got to it and I was like, well, if I do freelance 3D, I'm gonna need a tower, so I'm gonna need a PC. And I hated working on PCs, man. Like, I built so many PCs, and I just got so tired of having to fix them and everything. And I've had the same Mac now, probably since 2010. I think I got this Mac in 2010. I've never had a problem. It's crazy. Rhino. No, I haven't even heard of Rhino. I'm kind of out of the 3D loop since I left mobile games. But um. Honestly, Serenity, no. I'm so, like, bogged down with shit. If I do anything for Inktober, it'll probably be Book of Books work. You know? Oh, honey, are you trying to get... Oh. 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 Are you trying to get comfy? Oh, he's so grumpy. Why are you so grumpy? Huh? You're away from the bulldog, doesn't that make you happy? Butters, where are you? Butters. Alright, so I'm going to bring in... This is always good. If you have to do a bunch of similar images, similar styles, whatever, it's good to bring in your source material and have it next to it. So you can eye drop and everything. So since I want all these to basically look like this guy, I'm gonna bring him in. Are you eating my hair? What are you doing right now? What are you doing? Inktober was awesome for me for many years. Um, I mean, I made a whole book, my Grigor book. That was Inktober. That was awesome because, um, you know, I did all the, I did all the images, and then at the end of, uh, at the end of October, I had a whole book. I mean, if you think about it, that's why we do Journey June too, because by the end of the month you have a book, like 30 days, 30 pages, that's typical page count for a book. So I ended up making uh, Grigor. I retrofitted a story to it. So I mean, I highly suggest, you know, if you've never kind of done that, to definitely give it a shot. Um, I think it's the same thing here. And before I go in and start actually, like, 
Yeah, I'm not going to do that yet. I'm going to go through and do all the flats real quick. If anybody has any questions on what I'm doing right now, I know I'm going really fast, but if you're here last stream, this is basically the same thing I was doing last stream. I'm just doing it as fast as I normally do it. Remember I tell you, clipping masks and smart objects are your best friends. Also, it's funny when you got a dog in your lap and you can't actually hit the hotkey you want to hit. So I do have a hotkey for like um, reversing, uh, reversing or inversing my selection, but I can't hit it because Chancho's on my lap, <laughs> which is a silly problem to have. you serenity you gonna try to fit it in inktober I mean I would love to do it again someday but I really can't do it until I make my other book the book of books thing too many people think I'm not doing it like they think I'm all talk but honestly the whole reason I'm not doing it is I don't have a printer yet like my old pr book printer they went out of business because they got bought by Vistaprint those assholes and also books cost three to five hundred dollars to make so I gotta make sure I've got you know that and of course the time so it's a whole thing man <sighs> that's true well you could take the drawtober approach and maybe pick just four Inktober prompts, maybe, and do one a week. Yeah, do some ink scribbles. There's no rules to this shit. Do what you want to do. Didn't I just do that? Oh my god. It's like I've almost inadvertently made an animation. Oh well. My little trash bag baby. Kinda excited for Journey June next year though. We're gonna change up some stuff so it's easier and harder. <laughs> if that makes any sense. Um, this one I'm gonna have to come back to because he has to Actually, maybe he shouldn't. No, I might have to put this one aside. I can't do this one right now. Because his bottom, I wanted it to fit on something. But... I can't do that yet. Because the thing I want him to fit on isn't inked yet. So. Oh my god, Chancho. Did you toot? Oh my god, Chancho farted, you guys. Easier in what sense? Well, um, actually you're right, it is pretty easy already, <laughs> if that's what you mean. Um, easier just because I feel like, um, it's been hard with the fact that we realize it focuses on the hero too much. So we were thinking about having an option where it goes back and forth from the hero to the villain a little bit more so you don't see the villain at the very end, right? Because that's not like a normal story. So we were thinking about having a level two hero's journey where if you've done the first one, this one is kind of a good level up. Harder in what sense? In the same way. Um, the hard 
is also the easy, if it makes sense. Um, so the hard part, figuring out how to display your villains um, to people. Now, depending on how busy we get, I don't know if we'll have this idea down, but we should. Um, I feel like I haven't been messaging people well enough through the prompts, but I don't know how else to message better. Because, I mean, I, I put up Insta stories, I put up posts that explain everything. But the problem is you can't explain everything too much or else people don't get it if you explain it too much. But yeah, villain development. We actually thought about having a villain's journey, basically, but you could just take the hero's journey and make it a villain. After we were like, yeah, that's stupid. Why would we do that? So if you ever felt inclined to make a villain's journey, because um, technically Gabe's was supposed to be. No one really understood that about his. So his main character was actually supposed to be the bad guy the entire time. Um, and then when they get to the end, the final boss was actually the hero. Um, so we thought that was a pretty cool t twist, but um, with the time Gabe had, he didn't get to message that properly. So I feel like not everybody got it. Bach was cute, and he was the bad guy. <laughs> Bach was the bad man. Because the, uh, the chickens were supposed to be the enemy of the beetles. And then once you get to the end, it was supposed to be like a big beetle. Or a little beetle, sorry. And you were actually supposed to be the final bad guy. But since like the story started with Bach spawning, if you remember... So, we were gonna say that the game glitched, you know, and you started as the villain, and the hero got put in the villain spot. But like I said, Gabe didn't get to get around to that, unfortunately. Yeah, he's a cute villain. He's a good guy. He kind of came full circle, I think, at the end, though. Like, he wasn't a bad guy anymore. Are you still too warm? You're not even on my lap this time. It's actually chilly in here, Butters. Yeah, see? Serenity, you got it. The only thing that sucks about Journey June is that you can't tell too much usually you don't have time to um, so it that's my only regret really is you don't get to tell much especially with Gabe he always has these great ideas but he can't fully I guess show them because he never has enough time it sucks because I want to tell him no but at the same time I want to see it happen it's just I know he's not going to be able to finish it. So at least he finished it, but it wasn't to the extent it was supposed to be. Yeah, and I mean, when that happens, um, it's really good to bring yourself kind of back to what's important in the story. So anytime I've been like, oh yeah, and this would be great, and blah, 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 blah. And if you have a habit of doing that too much to where, like, you can't even keep track of the story anymore, or it's gotten so out of hand you can't get a grip on it anymore, you gotta go back to the basics, and this is sometimes where you gotta burn down some of what you've done um, to make sure that it still stays true to your story. Um, it's kind of like a remembering what's important here. Like, I know a bunch of times I had to check myself and remember, okay, so what? what is the their goal 
right? Sometimes you can totally forget what their goal is. Oops. Oops. What's wrong, Moose? That should be working. Why is that? Oh. Actually, embarrassing. This is also a good way to keep everything consistent. If you have a problem with consistency, doing a lot of these, like if you're doing um, stickers and stuff, it's good to do them all in the same area. Honestly, if I was really smart, I'd be doing these on the same layer, or set of layers, like where I can see them all at once. But. Honey, shush. Go wait. Chancha, you better be careful, you're gonna fall. When Gabe gets back, he's gonna have the food. Because Friday night is food out night. So, if anybody has anything you want to talk about real quick, let's talk. Because once he gets back, I'm I'm jumping off this because I want food. A dilemma? Sure. Eliza, you know I'm here for you. I'm here for all you guys. Bruni is also having a dilemma. An idea thing. Hey, why are you doing that? Oh, thank you, Chancho. Mm -hmm. Kisses are nice. What's wrong, baby? What's wrong? I'm surrounded by dogs. You had dinner. What? Serenity. Gabe's on his way back with food. And then I'll get off. Inktober is trying to figure out what to do and I settled on two ideas. Alright, Eliza, let's hear him. two giant doors, like they're technically four windows, and at night, uh, I hate having them open. One was like Inktober, but like doors, like I'd be able to magically... We, actually, Faith, do you remember Art Faithfully who used to come on here? She was doing a doors uh, theme too, but hers was watercolor. Do you have dry mouth or something? Like, you okay? You doing all right? I think doors is cool. Also, choosing a a theme is a good idea. Like that's what my book of books was, and that's what it turned into. So I definitely say pick a theme. It helps, especially if you're having a shit day. You can just kind of relax and use your theme as your crutch. It's pretty nice. Oh, because you do that for work already. Well, do you think you get to have enough fun with it, Eliza, that it won't feel like work? Or is there a way you can separate it in your head from work? Or do you really just not want to do it because it's too close to work? Because it probably would be good for you to kind of think of, you know, if it is too close or not. Because that could be really, like, you don't want to give up on that 
too far in just because it is too close to what you do on the daily. I know I'm missing highlights, but I might go back and do those in a little bit. Bruni, you okay? today, huh? Well, the doors you'd be doing though, are those, are those enough fun to keep you thinking it's not work? Like, do you get to have enough fun with that where it feels like it's a different project entirely? Because if you can't separate it, then yeah, I wouldn't do it. Maybe draw a door, like a fun door, and see how you feel. What's wrong? You got itches? Come here. You got itches? She gets itchy. She's got allergies. What's your other idea? Case, Eliza, that should be obvious, yeah? Rooney, stop it! Humans and animals basically become continuation of what I did last year. I don't remember what she did last year. Um, um, I mean, I'd say just do whatever you think you're gonna have fun with. You know you best. I would say pick something that has enough challenge to it and has enough um, variety to keep you entertained, but also, like I said, the challenges, I mean, it'd be, how about, I, I, got a, I got a challenge for you, how about you pick something where you can have some spot blacks involved? I feel like everybody needs help with spot blacks. Um, like, just even doing spot blacks, you know. Is Papa here? I'm so mean. Aw, uh, Wiccan, thank you for the host. I appreciate that, oh my god. <coughs> Bruni, come here. So, uh, Frank Miller does a lot of spot blacks. Mike Mignola does a lot of spot blacks. It's, uh, they're really gutsy like comic artists and stuff if you can do spot blacks and you can do them well and you place them really well takes a lot of confidence takes a lot of knowing lighting uh, and I feel like there's always room for improvement for everybody to do spot blacks so uh, if you type in spot blacks comics I bet you'll get something yeah so deciding how to do that kind of contrast, Google it. It'll, it'll explain. <coughs> hey, why are you doing that? Rooney, are you that upset? Huh? It's okay, Musu. Here, you want to lick this? Yeah, think about it. Oh, thank you, Wiccan. I appreciate that. I hope you've had a good Friday the 13th. Mine's been pretty good. Mine, uh, usually I have really lucky, like, really lucky Friday the 13th, but today is just pretty normal. Oh, it's been awesome? Good. Good. Bernie, don't be sad. You gotta look for Papa. Oh, Chacho, really? You gotta clean yourself while on me? Is my hair getting in your mouth? Is that why? You okay? Hey, Jeremy, what's up? How you doing, buddy? Oh, 
Don't cry, everyone. Go see if Papa's here. Hmm? You're fine. My bulldog is such a tub. She always wants food. We gave you so much chicken earlier. You had so much chicken. You doing good? I'm glad to hear it. I feel like you're gonna yell at me any minute, Bruni. You're welcome, Eliza. Yeah, I feel like if you've already done it and, you know, it wouldn't be as exciting for you and if you'd be stretching for ideas. So I did Book of Books three Inktobers in a row. By the third one, I couldn't even finish because I ran out of ideas. And I was probing people for more ideas. Couldn't get them. So I feel like there is... A time when you just you just run out you know so I would do something fresh something you're not familiar with something that intrigues you something that excites you you know what I can't figure out why you're upset you're fed you're watered did you get enough sleep do you need to go night night Chancho, do you want to get up? I think Chancho's too warm. Okay, come here, honey. Come here. Oh, yeah, you're warm. Okay, boy. Oh, say bye-bye. Bye-bye. Oh, there you go. All right. I didn't run out of ideas. Yeah, honestly, that's a, that's a fair reason. I mean, it sucks. Running out of ideas during a challenge is, I don't know, it's a little embarrassing. Um, I actually wrote down all my ideas I had for Smogist last year, and I was going to do it this year, and I'm actually still really damn sad that I didn't get to do it, because I was busy, I was at Dragon Con, it was, it was crazy, but maybe next year. I would like to do one monthly challenge completely on Twitch. So like every day, uh, come on to do that day's thing and then just log off, you know. And now that I have my camera that it's like when I'm not here or if I just want to stream and not physically be showing, um, I can put this up. And I'm happy about that. So. Well, if it's Inktober, Eliza, it's gotta be Ink, right? So. Just not the right mood set. I know how that goes. I have been a bitch the last two days. It's been bad. I've been so mean. I don't know why. It's one of those things. I hate it. Yeah daily streamathon, and I assume it'd only be for like an hour, maybe even less, but I would like to do it. It would make most sense to do it for Journey June. What? Okay. I think she's just itchy. She gets frustrated. And now her and Chancho are playing. 
You guys plan? Be nice. Bruni, go see if Papa's home. Sometimes I'm a jerk. It's okay. Oh, I didn't even finish this damn foot. Ah. Oh, I hate this. Then when I'm in Photoshop, you can see the total difference between my lines. Ugh. Bruni. want to be a partner anymore because they make it so incredibly difficult to get to. That's good, Eliza. That means you, you figured it out. Oh, I'm gonna go because I'm gonna deal with Bruni here. Leave him alone. Leave him alone. God, they're like children. Um, and Gabe's bringing food and I'm getting hangry and I don't want to take it out on you. You don't deserve that. Um... So I have been streaming randomly lately. Some of you were here for the last one, so I'll for sure be here next Friday at 4 p.m. Central, but I might also be here working on these maybe for my patrons, because these are gonna be stickers. Um, so I might work on these again this weekend. Who knows? Uh, but yeah, I'm glad you appreciate it. Thank you, Eliza. You're welcome, Serenity. Thank you for coming. It wouldn't be the same without you guys, really one. Was thank you. Oh, you're now the stream king or queen or person. <laughs> thank you so much. Congrats on being the stream king, stream boss. Oh, Bruni, it's okay. All right. Well, I'll see you guys later for sure on Friday, but maybe sometime in between. All right. Um. Throw up a notification on the top of my window if you want to know when I go. Otherwise, my Instagram, I usually say, and sometimes Twitter, but for sure Instagram. Instagram's my home. So thank you guys so much for coming. I had fun. I had fun. I'm just tired and hangry. I'm so sorry. All right. I'll see you later. Bye.